Hey guys, it's Mike Omar from www.makemoneyfromhomelionsclub.com. In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you how to build a professional website or a professional blog quickly. Uh, and that includes how to buy your domain, how to buy your hosting account, how to connect those two, and then how to install WordPress. Um, I do want to point out that the website you build today will be completely customizable to whatever kind of look that you want. Um, there's no coding knowledge needed or required to do this. We're not going to be going into coding at all. It'll be on your own domain um, and pretty much everything related to building a website uh, I'm going to be teaching you. I'm going to teach you how to add images, how to add links, you know, how to add a sidebar, whatever kind of colors or layout that you want. I'll teach you how to change and modify those to whatever look that you want. You can add social media buttons, uh, Google Map if you need one for like a business website or whatever. If you're going, you know, going to be selling products, I'll show you how to add you know, buy now buttons, PayPal buttons. I'll show you how to use plugins. If you want to add a newsletter, all of that I'm going to teach you how to do. And you can get this website up and running in less than an hour's time. It'll look completely professional. Um, the way I'm going to show you how to do it is I'm actually going to show you the process of me building the website, MikeOmarPhotography.com. So that website will be the final product of what I build while I show you this process. But you can follow along and build the website however it is that you want. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is if, uh, if you're on my main website, makemoneyfromhomelionsclub.com, go ahead and click on the resources tab up here. This page, by the way, is where I have all the tools and all the things I use to build and run and operate an online business. But in this case, we're just going to the first one, domain registration and hosting. So click here and click on Black Steel Hosting. That'll take you there. If you're watching this on Udemy, for example, you just go to the video description. You'll find the link there. Just go ahead and click here and you'll go to Black Steel Hosting. Same goes for YouTube or whatever. The link will be in the video description. But this is where you want to be. Okay, so this is where you're going to buy your domains and your hosting. Um, I really like Black Steel Hosting for a lot of reasons. They provide really high value for their products. Uh, their hosting is really high quality. They really focus on um, the security of their servers, which means you know your websites are safe, your information is safe. Um, also, I really like that they're very straightforward with their pricing. They're not like GoDaddy or one of those companies where even though everything starts off really cheap, they eventually start raising their prices on you. They're always inserting hidden fees. Um, these guys are really straightforward about all that kind of stuff. Also, they offer 24-7 customer support, which is really nice. It's really helpful. And no, these guys are really good. I host a lot of my websites with them. Okay, so it's time to pick the domain for your first website. If you already know what you're going to make your website about, type in the domain that you want right here, and you can pick any of these endings right here. And actually, there's a lot more available, so if you want something else, you can get something else. But go ahead and type it in, and just press the search bar to see if it's available. If, uh, if you don't know what to make your first website about, it's still very important that you go ahead and make a website today. You know, start building that forward momentum, like go ahead and get something accomplished. If you have absolutely no idea, I think a really cool first project for anyone just starting out is to actually make a freelancing website because by the end of these first few lessons, you'll actually be pretty qualified to build any kind of website that you want, any kind of professional website or blog with anything that someone else might want, all the links, all the images, whatever it is. So that's actually a pretty cool first project because not only do you build yourself a side business, you actually just have something to, to play with, to get creative with, to really get to learn and explore the software. Um, freelancing websites was actually how I got started in this business years ago. I basically built one and I started advertising my services on Craigslist. I would make a website for someone for $500 and I would get, you know, two, three, four gigs a month. So it was a great source of side income. So if you don't know what to make your first website about, you know, just make your name websites.com or your name website creation services.com. And that could be your first project. Okay, so the domain I want for this project is Mike Omar Photography. Omar Photography. And then over here, you can pick what ending you want it in. Here are the most, you know, the five most common domain uh, endings that you could pick from. And then there's a more option. So you can actually pick from a lot more. Um, you know, .com is the most popular. So that's the one I'm going to go with. So let's press the search button and see if it's available. 
Sorry, michaelmorephotography.com is already taken. Actually, because I'm making this video as an update, I already knew this was going to happen because I actually already bought this domain itself. But uh, because it's not available um, and I want to show you how this process works, I think, in my opinion, the best, the next best available of .com is taken. If you, you know, if you know specifically you want this, is the .net or the .org. So I'm going to press the .net. I'm going to press the check mark here, and then here you can pick for how long you want it. I'll just go ahead and pick one year. Um, I did want to point out that you could press this button here, search m multiple TLDs, and you can look for all these other ones. So if you want, you know, if you want .uk because you're in the UK or I believe .r use for Russia, or maybe, you know, well, I don't know what a lot of these are. But basically, whatever you're interested in, you just press these check marks, and then fill this in. So, 73NJK, and then check availability. Oh, whoops, I didn't type it incorrect. Hold on. And then H7BF. Give it a second. All right, and basically it shows all the ones that are available. So all the ones that I look for are available. Um, you know, one thing I did want to mention, if this is if this is uh, for a specific project like a blog or something or, or like a website where you don't want other people to own the same ending as you, you could go ahead and buy, uh, you know, like the .com, the .net, and the .org so that no one else could ever get those domains and like build a website, you know, on the same domain as you with a different ending. That's only, that's probably only important for people that, you know, are really, really concerned about the branding of their domain or whatever. For most people that really won't be necessary. But like I said, for this example right now, I already have the michaelmorephotography.com. So I'm going to go for the .net and let's press the button order now. Okay, so here we are at the next page uh, where it says domains configuration and is asking about mikeomarphotography.net if you add, want to add on ID protection for $15.95 for the year. So basically what this means is if you get ID protection, uh, nobody can look up or they can try and look up your website information, but they won't be able to see any of your personal details. They won't be able to see your name, your address, your phone number, or your email. Um, if you don't have it, uh, they'll be able to find that information. It's all available on who is. So, you know, this option is pretty much personal preference. If you have like, you know, a business website or a blog or whatever, and you don't want that information to get out there, then I would definitely recommend, uh, getting this. If, um, you know, if your websites are mostly like passive websites in nature and they're not what you know websites that most people will be looking up the information or be curious who the owner is then in that case you know you don't really need it it's really just uh personal preference it's up to you but for me i like to have it so i'm going to go ahead and press this check mark and then the name servers are fine everything else is fine so i'm going to press update cart okay so here we are at the checkout page but we're actually still not done because we still need to buy the hosting so uh, I guess we could have actually done that on the last page. I saw the option for it, but whatever, it doesn't matter. We can just go here to continue shopping. And here it takes us straight to web hosting. So these are your different web hosting options. Um, here's, here's the extra details here. And actually, if you go to the main website, you'll see like all more of the, de all, all, uh, all the details you need to know about each plan. But um, you know, these are the big ones, like the big things that distinguish the small one, the medium one, and the heavy one. Essentially, the small one is for one website. The medium website, the, the medium plan is for up to 10 websites. And then the heavy one is for unlimited amount of websites. So I would say most people watching here should probably go for the medium plan because you get up to 10 websites that you can host on there within the same plan, up to 10 domains, and you're good to go. If you know for a fact that you're only going to do one website and you're not going to build any more, then you can go ahead and go for the small one. And if you know for a fact you're going to be building more than 10 websites, then go ahead and go for the heavy one. All these, uh, you know, amount of email accounts and like the amount of space you have is pretty much appropriate for how big the plan is. So go ahead and order which one you want. Um, press the order now button and I'll see you at the next screen. Okay, so here we are on the next screen. 
um, product configuration. So pick any of these options. In our case, use a domain already in my shopping cart. We only have one domain, which is listed here. So this is the one that we want. If, uh, if you didn't have a red, a domain registered yet and you wanted to buy one, you could, cl you could click this option. If you actually have domains at another, uh, domain registrar or hosting company, you can transfer them over to Black Seal Hosting if you want. Or I'll update my name service on existing domain or I'll register a new domain. You know, here's another option as well. But if you're watching this video and following along, just plus this one and press here, click to continue. Okay. So. This is the product that you selected, the medium size web hosting. Okay, so billing cycle. Pretty much the way they have it set up is the longer you sign up for in advance, the cheaper it is. Um, so, you know, as you can see, they go lower and lower as you sign up for longer. I would recommend for signing up for either the 12 month or 24 month, or if you can afford it, just go straight up for the 36 month because the longer you sign up, you know, assuming you know you're going to be in this business for the long term or you know you want this business for a long time, the longer you get, the better. Uh, for the sake of this example, I'll just pick this um, 24 month price, which puts it at 1395 uh, US dollars per month is how much the hosting account will be. Whoops. Okay. 1395 per month. Um, then you have these add ons available backup restore programs. I mean, you guys could read this all in detail when you're actually doing the pro the, uh, this process yourself, but basically this is for $5 a month. It means they'll, they'll back up your website. If anything goes wrong or, you know, they'll, they'll do a free restore for you to, you know, whatever, whatever date, whatever previously. Okay. So they have weekly backups. They already include, but if you actually need to use them, it's usually $5 per request, but here you get 10 restores per month. So pretty much if you think that, you know, you might be making a lot of mistakes or you're afraid that you'll be, you know, you'll be messing up a lot and you want to have like the, you know, the peace of mind that you can just go on the, to their support and have them back up your website and restore it to the prior week or the week before that, then it's something I would recommend. If you feel fairly comfortable with WordPress and your own abilities, which I would you know, that's how I feel about me. Uh, I'm not going to opt for this. Then the other option is professional WordPress installation. Okay. We'll install any available script. Okay. So they'll install any script that you want on whatever domain for $25. Um, I'm going to show you how to install WordPress right now. So if you follow along with this video, you don't really need it. But if you're, you know, if you're following along and you're getting messed up in the technical aspect or you're just not getting it, uh, here's an option for you. Basically, the guys over there will install. It could be WordPress, Joomla, or, you know, Drupal, whatever. There's all those other different programs. Um, they'll install it for you for $25. So you can click this if it's something you're interested in. If not, just leave them unchecked and press Add to Cart. Okay, so the next screen takes us back actually to that original screen where we're once at. But now you can see instead of having the you know, the red alert that said no hosting and now says has hosting. Uh, we already decided we did want the ID protection. So this is, you know, it's not an additional cost. It's just listing the same one. So basically now we have the domain mikephotography.net with hosting and ID protection. So let's press update cart. And there we go. Here is the total price. Um, there's one more thing I wanted to show you. So instead of pressing checkout, I want to show you one more thing before we actually check out. If you press on continue shopping, you'll go once again back to this place where you have all the categories, the web hosting. You don't need one more than one hosting account, by the way, that, you know, if you have, you know, like I should, like I said before, the, the hosting account can carry multiple websites. So you only need one. So if you already have the hosting, you're fine. Uh, if you want to buy more domains, you just go to register domain and you can look for more donate domains the same way we did before. Transfer domain is for. If you have domains at another, uh, registrar or hosting account, you want to transfer them over. View cart is the final checkout, but I wanted to talk about SS, um, SSL certificates real quick. SSL certificates are probably something most people watching will not need, but I want to cover them real quick because some of you will want this. So what an SSL certificate basically is, it's a way of, um, protecting 
information that uh, people that go on your website, when they submit it to your website, it's a way to protect that information from other people who might be trying to get it. So basically what you want an SSL certificate for is for websites like e-commerce websites where people be submitting like their name, their, you know, their address, their phone number, their credit card information, that kind of thing. Those websites, you definitely need an SSL certificate. Um, if you're going to be running like a membership website or something like that, basically anything where you're selling a product, anything where people have to log in and they're going to use their username and their password, anything like that, you will need uh, an SSL certificate. And then right here, they have four different ones at like different levels. So the, here's like the most basic one. Uh, it's just for one domain. It has a 10,000. You, you can read all these in detail later, but I'll just go over them real, real, real quick. Um, you know, this is for one domain, basic SSL certificate, uh, $10,000 USD warranty. This is, this one's almost the exact same thing, except it has a much higher warranty, but it's still also for one domain. Um, the SSL certificates that are wild cards basically means that instead of being for one single domain, it can be for all subdomains as well. So, you know, it'll be domain.com, but also payments.domain.com, also login.domain.com, etc. cetera. And then the highest priced one is this one, which is for an entire website, like all subdomains, all extended domains, everything. So like I said, this is something to look into if you are, you know, building a membership website, building an e-commerce website, building a website where you're selling a product, anything at all where someone on your website will be submitting their personal data. Um, but if, if, you know, if you're just building a blog or something or a basic website, then it's definitely something you don't need. Uh, for this project right now, it's definitely, it's definitely not something I need. So let's go to view cart where I'll go to the checkout. Okay, so here's the final checkout page. You know, before you pay, you obviously want to make sure everything you got is correct. So the hosting for this website, the domain registration for this website, one year with the ID protection, and then here's all the prices. Um, you know, you can remove anything that you want, or you can go back and edit whatever it is that you want, maybe the payment length or whatever it is. But as long as everything looks good, go ahead and press checkout. Okay, so uh, that's the final price. I'm going to go ahead and fill all this out right now. Um, I just want to make sure there's nothing else. No, it's a basic checkout form. You don't really, you don't really need any additional instructions from me. So go ahead and fill this out. And once you're done, press complete order. Okay, so once you finished uh, checking out. You know, you'll get to a confirmation page. Uh, you'll get a few confirmation emails. Um, be sure to save all those. They contain imp important information. But um, now you want to go back to Black Seal Hosting and then go over here to Client Area. Once you click on there, uh, log in with the email address and the password. They're the ones you created when you were checking out. So use those and go ahead and log in. Okay, so once you're logged in, this is basically your control area for everything you might need to do from now on. If you want to buy more domains, if you want to upgrade your hosting, if you need, you know, support help, if you want to open a ticket because you're having technical problems, problems with your billing, whatever it is, you can do it all from here. And it's pretty easy to navigate. It's the same as it always was before. The home page, then services is the, the page we're on right now, which has the hosting account you have. Um, if you want to order new services, that's where you can find, you know, if you want to upgrade your hosting, get SSL certificates, buy more, more domains, whatever you want to do, it can all be done here. Um, Add-ons, this is if you did want to get the restores program, if you did want to get WordPress or whatever installed for you, it can all be done from here. Buy more domains, invoices, support, and if you want to open a ticket. But right now to install WordPress, what we're going to do, go to services and then go to my services. Go here and then press view details. Once you're at view details, all you have to do is press log into cPanel and this is going to open your cPanel. Okay, when you press this button, it's going to open in a new tab and it's going to have a screen like this. Honestly, uh, do not worry about this. 
there's not a problem, just press advance and then press proceed. And here you are on the back end of cPanel. Now, I know this looks a little scary, but honestly, do not worry about what most of these buttons are, what most of this stuff does. Mo you won't have to use most of it. Honestly, I never use, like most of the stuff I've never used and I don't know what half of it does. It's not a big deal. Once you're at this screen, all you wanna do is scroll all the way down and you're gonna click on WordPress right here under Softaculous Apps Installer. So press here. Okay, so pressing that button will take you to this screen. And once you're here, go ahead and press on install. And we're gonna start filling all this out. So choose protocol. Uh, just leave it as HTTP, unless of course you got SSL, in which case you want it to be HTTPS. But most people watching will probably press this one. Choose a domain. Uh, we want it on michaelmarphotography.net. In directory, you want this blank. Uh, database name, it doesn't matter what it is, so go ahead and leave it with whatever it came. Table prefix, prefix uh, leave it like this. Site name, uh, whatever you want your site name to be. Mo for most people watching, it'll be um, whatever your domain is. So Mike Omar Photography. Site description, uh, that's basically a tagline that's right under the title. You'll see what I mean once uh, we go to the website, once WordPress is installed. So I'm just going to put, uh, for all your photography needs. Enable multi-site, leave that unchecked. Admin username, uh, make it whatever you want, but don't leave it as admin. Just make it something else. I'm going to make it Mike. Admin password, uh, make sure it's a really good password. Um, if you press this key, it'll give you something really strong. So that's an option for you, and then you can just save this somewhere. Admin email, go ahead and put in your personal email address. Um, language English, well, unless of course you feel more comfortable in some other language, in which case, you know, you can choose whatever language, but we're going to leave it English. Uh, limit login attempts. This is actually a pretty good plugin to have. Um, so we're going to go ahead and check that. What this plugin does is when you go to your WordPress website and you want to make updates or whatever, uh, there's going to be a login screen in the back end. That's where you're going to type in this username and this password. What this plugin does is if someone tries to get in and they're incorrect more than three times, they're locked out of the account and can't log back in for, I think the default setting is 24 hours. So because that won't happen to you, because you know your username and password, uh, it's a way to prevent uh, brute attacks for people who might try to get into your website. So I think it's a pretty good plugin to have. Um, let's see what the advanced options are. Disable update notifications. No, we want those notifications. Auto upgrade. Um, yeah, that's a good one. It basically automatically upgrades your WordPress whenever you need it. Um, auto upgrade WordPress plugins. Uh, no, you should do that manually. It's very easy to do. By the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, uh, these things are all be cleared up in the later lessons once I start teaching about plugins, themes, whatever. Um, so these things, let's not keep them as auto. You can, uh, you can update them manually. So let's leave it like that. Automated backups. Um, I don't know where these backups go. Maybe they're emailed to you, but either way, they'll definitely be free. So it might not be a bad idea. Um, why not do once a week is fine. Backup rotation. Okay. So how many you get before they delete? Oh, so they're not emailed. I guess they're in the system somewhere. Um, this is a good setting once a week up to four. So you get up to, to go back a month. I'm not really sure where these go, but I suppose if something happens, you know, it could be something to look into. So I may as well have it if it's being offered. Um, select the theme. We're going to go over themes later. Right now we'll just go for the default theme. So once you've set all this up, uh, press install here and I'll meet you at the next screen. Okay, so WordPress finished installing and uh, I'm going to show you that in a minute. But before we continue and I show you the website, uh, I want to show you just a few more things. Here in cPanel, if uh, say you need to install WordPress or some other script on another domain, there is one additional step. I'm sure when you noted, I'm sure you noticed it when we went here to WordPress um, and we came here to install, there was only this domain available in the dropdown. That's because this is a domain 
that's associated already with the cPanel and this hosting account. But if you bought more domains, it's very, very easy to add those on, but there is one additional step. So what you do is you come over here and you go to add on domains and say you, you know, I don't know what the website might be, but say you made some other website like this is Mike Omar photography second website.com. So uh, let's just say I also bought that domain when we were checking out or I just bought it, you know, on another occasion, but this is another domain I own within, uh, you know, my black steel hosting account. So you, so you just type in your no name here with whatever ending it is dot net or dot org or whatever. Um, this, uh, you just make something up, like make up the username. So let's make it, you know, Mike one, whatever, something like that. Something you need to save somewhere. Then you go ahead and make a password. You make another password. You can use a password generator. Um, you know, generate password, use password. So say you have it and go ahead and press add domain. Once you do that, the domain will be added here. Make sure you wrote down all this information somewhere. And then when you come over here, and you scroll down to WordPress and then you go to install whatever domain that you added in that step, where is it, will now show up here and you can choose that new domain here in this drop down and then you do the entire process all over again like we did earlier and the new domain uh, will have WordPress installed on it. So that is the way you add additional domains um, I'm sorry, additional WordPress installations to your domain. And another thing I wanted to point out is, so to log into cPanel, all we did was come to this area here, um, which I showed you earlier, go to services, my services, and press on view details. And you, when you press here to log into cPanel, it automatically logs you into the cPanel, right? But um, this login information, just in case you need it for some reason, like your username and your password. If you come over here and you go to change password, it'll show you your uh, username and your login password. So if ever you need that information, you can find it right here. But now let's show you uh, MikeOmarPhotography.net to see what happened after you installed WordPress. Okay, so MikeOmarPhotography.net and perfect, this is the screen you wanna see. This right here basically means that it worked. This is the default WordPress installation. This is basically uh, an empty shell of a website that's ready to be filled out by you. So, you know, it's got sample pages and sample posts and like sample comments and whatever. But uh, at this point, you pretty much are where you wanna be. Um, whenever you go to modify your website, update your website, do whatever it is you wanna do, you do it right from this screen here. You go to your domain.net or you know your domain in this case .net but if it's .com .com and then just go right here press dash wp dash admin and that'll take you to the screen with your uh where you type in your username and password these are the ones that you set up right at the very end when you were installing wordpress and basically you know from here and from here is where you will be doing all your website updates from now on. You don't have to go to any of the other things you were, like all the technical places were before, you don't really have to go in there. Very, like from time to time, you may have to for specific reasons, but for the most part, all, up, all updates you'll be doing will be done from right here, from your domain and then dash WP, oh sorry, uh, slash uh, WP dash admin. And uh, just a few things I wanna point out if you didn't get to this screen for some reason, if it, you know, if it's getting to some screen that says like, you know, website doesn't exist or something like that, um, don't freak out just yet. There's a few things that might have happened that are pretty easy to fix. One is simply you just might have to wait a little bit longer. For some reason, sometimes it takes WordPress a little bit longer or just a little while to install. Um, so if you just, you know, step away from, from your computer for like half an hour, an hour and come back, try it again, it might actually uh, work. Um, if you do that and it still hasn't happened, the other thing you might want to try is clearing the cache on your browser. So whatever browser you're using, in this case I'm using um, Google Chrome, just go to Google and type in, uh, you know, Google, 
Google Chrome how to clear cache, and then it'll tell you how to do it. It's usually something that takes just a minute. Once you clear the cache, you go back to your domain, reload it, and the default WordPress installation that you're looking at right here should work. Um, if it's still not working, at that at that point, I'd probably uh, contact Black Steel Hosting to see if they can figure out like what happened or why it didn't work. Okay, guys, we're pretty much done with the first part of building a website, which is basically, you know, buying the domain, the hosting, and installing WordPress. Uh, in the next lessons, I'm going to show you the process of actually filling out this website and turning it into a final product. But we've basically passed all the technical stuff, and now we're going to get into, like, the more, you know, fun, creative side of building a website, adding the images, adding the links, adding the text, you know, mailing lists, social media, all that stuff uh, we'll be doing in the next lessons. Um, one thing I would suggest is if you haven't done so already from my website, make money from home lines club.com, I'd suggest signing up for this newsletter. The newsletter is basically uh, free information, uh, regarding how to build an online business, how to build websites, uh, how to do online marketing. It's all free information. Um, and then occasionally there'll be, you know, either updates or announcements regarding my how to make money online school. So if you haven't signed up for it, um, you could go ahead and do that here. Of course, if you don't like it, you can unsubscribe at any time. And I will see you guys in the next lesson. Thank you for watching. Hey guys, this is Mike Omar from www.makemoneyfromhomelionsclub.com. In the last lesson, I showed you how to install WordPress on your own domain. And we did it with this one, MikeOmarPhotography.com. And what you're looking at here is the default installation of WordPress. Once you install WordPress on your own domain, this is what you're going to be presented with. It's a very basic, nothing has been done to it yet, presentation of your website. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to start to modify this website to, you know, whatever it is you want to do with it, whether it's a website or a blog, whatever. I'm going to show you how to install themes which pretty much means uh, the appearance of the website, the structure, the colors, everything like that. I'm going to show you ha how to add posts and pages to the website. Essentially, what I mean is uh, the content. And I'm also going to show you how to modify the sidebar so that you could add links or announcements, you know, social media buttons, whatever it is you want. I'll show you how to do all that in this lesson. I'm also going to show you how to modify the settings so that this website will be completely search engine optimized or SEO'd, which the point of that is that uh, your website will be more search engine friendly, so you'll rank for more keywords in Google, Bing, things like that. All right, so let's begin. Okay, so here we're looking at the front of WordPress, the front end. This is pretty much what the entire world will see whenever they go to your domain. To start to modify this website, we want to go to the back end. And to do that, you just put it, put in your domain name.com or your domain name dot whatever, then slash WP dash admin, press enter. And it will take you to this login page. And this login page, uh, put in your username and password, the one you signed up with, log in, and I'll see you at the next screen. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is how to add content to your website. And there's two ways to do that with WordPress. There are posts and there are pages. The posts being right here and the pages being right here. The difference is posts. So WordPress was originally set up as blogging software. It can be used to make a regular website or a blog. Either one is fine, but that's, that's to explain the setup a little. So posts are your entries or the actual like meat of your website. If you have a website about photography, then these would be the posts that you make about photography, you know, whatever it is you want to write about, different types of photography, some photos you put, you took, whatever it is you want to do. Pages would be more in reference to, to the kinds of URLs on your website that are about me page, um, contact, you know, our story, terms and conditions, stuff like that. And if you go to the website itself, you'll see that, you know, every theme has a different setup, but this default theme, the default WordPress theme for this year, 2014, is going to have the pages up here along the top, and you'll see the posts here in the sidebar that's on the left side. But later on when we change the theme, you're going to see some different some different layouts anyway, but that's, that's pretty standard, having the pages along the top 
and the post along the sidebar. All right, so now I'm gonna show you us adding an actual post and an actual page. So right now, recent posts, hello world, there's just one. When you click on it, it just says, hello world, welcome to WordPress this is your first post, edit or delete. That's the one it comes with. So when you go to the dashboard and you press on posts, you'll see that that post is right here. Hello world, you can edit it, quick edit, trash, view, whatever. So let's go here and add a new post. This is my first post. Whoops. Hello, exclamation mark. Let's publish it. Give it a second. All right, it's published. So now when we go back to the website, we'll refresh. And you'll now see that there's two posts here. Hello world, and this is my first post. Press on here. This is my first post, and it says hello. And it says, you know, this is the default it comes with the date you posted it, who posted it, leave a comment, etc. So now, let's go back here. Let's go back to all the posts listed. So there should be two. This is my first post in Hello World. So now we're gonna trash this one. Okay, it's been deleted. Now let's renew. Here's the two, and now there's just one. This is my first post. So just like that, that's how you add a post, delete posts, uh, there's obviously a lot more detail to this, but that's the overall. Um, pages works the exact same way. Right now we only have sample page. And under sample page it says, this is an example page, blah, 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 blah. So let's do something else. Let's go to, con uh, sorry, to pages. There's a sample page right there. I'm going to show you something. Let's click on sample page. Let's just delete this, update it. You're going to see that that pages and posts work the exact same way in terms of how to manipulate them. Uh, they only show up in different parts of the website. So now let's refresh this page. And just like that, the part that was here before that I deleted is no longer there. So you'll see it's actually really easy to start to modify it. Um, now let's add a page just to give you another example. Pages, add new. Contact me. Feel free to contact me about anything at all. Let's publish it. Go back here. Let's refresh. So now you see there's a sample page and there's a contact me page. And if we press here on contact me, it's what I wrote. Feel free to contact me about anything at all. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to update the sidebar or modify it to however you see fit. So for example, right here, the very first thing on the sidebar is a search button, then recent posts, recent comments is blank because there are no comments. Archive, there's only January 2014. Categories, we haven't set up any categories yet, and then the meta, the meta section. So this all can be changed, and I'm gonna show you how to right now. Go back to the back end. We're gonna to go to appearance and then to widgets. And right here, uh, you're going to see that the way it's set up is actually pretty cool. It's just pretty much a, a drop and drag system. So for example, that search bar, that search uh, bar at the top, we can just remove it if we want to. We can remove recent posts. We can remove meta. And then we can also add things. We can add whatever we want. We could decide to add a calendar if we want to. You know, and you can drop it anywhere. Uh, we could also add some text wherever we want. And so for example, let's say this is this is the new setup that we want. We want to keep archives, we want to keep recent, well, let's take this out since it's going to be blank anyway. Text, archives, calendar, and categories. Or let's take out categories too, just so you guys see an example. Then in text, <clears throat> title, we'll just put title in here. And this, whoops, this is the text in my text widget. Save it. Close it. Archives. Let's, instead of having it say archives, let's make it say history. 
Display is drop down, press check. For right now I'm just picking kind of random stuff so you can see just how customizable it is. Press save and calendar. Instead of calendar, let's put time. All right, actually let's just leave it as is so you'll see you'll see that it will just say calendar. So we'll close these back up. Go back over here, reload. And you'll see it's everything we did. The title of the of the text widget just says title because that's what we put. This is my text in my text widget. The history and it was a drop down menu so you can select the month. And then a calendar right here and nothing else. So pretty much you can actually see that the that the sidebar is really, really easy to manipulate. And there's some other options over here. Content sidebar. I'm actually not sure what that is because this uh this new this theme is actually new to me. I haven't used it before. Let's just do a little test. Uh, let's put a text widget in there. Content sidebar. Let's see where this shows up. Save. And the footer one, let's add something in there and it should be along the bottom. Let's say we want our pages to be along the footer as well. Let's hold on. Let's update. Let's open this. And let's have the pages show up down there as well. Pages in the footer. Save. And let's just kind of see what happens. So we go back here. Reload. Oh, okay. So the content sidebar is right here on this theme, which I suppose means you could have uh, two sidebars pretty much. You could have one on the left and one on the right. So the content sidebar is the one on the right. The pages were here along the top by default. And then... Now we have them in the footer as well, see? Pages in the footer. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to manipulate all this stuff. Uh, let's put another text one in the footer just to see what happens. Widget number two in the footer. Thank you for visiting my photography website. Save it. Let's go back here, reload this, and there's widget number two in the footer right here. So as you can see, we're already, you, you already at this point have a decent idea of how to start manipulating all this. You could add posts, you can add pages, and you can manipulate all these different uh, sidebars. Also remember that in the widget area, each theme is different. So for example, this one, there's three different places you can add widgets, which is the primary sidebar, the content sidebar, and the footer area. Uh, other themes will offer more areas. Other themes will offer less. Uh, it's just kind of you explore a new theme as uh, you get to know it, and then you see what options you have. But that is pretty much how you modify the sidebars. And now I'm going to teach you how to install different themes on here. All right, so this is a default theme for WordPress. Now I'm gonna show you how to add themes. Uh, at first, I'm gonna show you how to add all the free themes that are available on WordPress. Um, once I do that, I'm gonna show you how you could get premium themes that you could pay for. Uh, and there's, there's different options for that. But first, let's start with the free ones. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with going with the free theme. There's a lot of great ones. Um, and let me show you how you get them. So once again, go to the sidebar. Under Appearance, you press on Themes. So here is actually the, the pre-installed themes. Every year WordPress comes out with a different theme. So there's 2012, 2013, 2014. So uh, I guess before I show you how to search for new themes, I'll show you how to install one of the older ones. So let's just press here on activate. And now this is the theme that the website is using. So let's reload this. And as you can see, I'm now on a different theme. But what's really cool about it is when you update a theme, everything that you had before that can be transferred will be transferred. For example, you know, the, the title and the tagline, obviously, the pages that you had and the posts that you had and uh, the way your widgets were set up. So your content sidebar and your footer sidebar. So if you were to update to a theme that didn't have the equivalent widgets, for example, it didn't have a footer fo footer widget available, then those wouldn't transfer over and you'd have to go back again and customize a little bit. 
But for the most part, most of the stuff on your website will transfer over. So you don't have to fear losing your content or losing the things you've done because you're getting a new theme. So that's one really nice, nice thing about getting new themes. But let's, uh, let's find some new themes. All right, so we're gonna go here to add new. And we're gonna use a search one because we're just gonna look for a free theme that's available. So if you go down here, you can, you can, if you have something specific in mind, like say you want a gray website and you want it to have two columns and you want it to have, you know, all these different kinds of features, then you can go ahead and check them off. Right now, I'm not gonna be really too picky because I just wanna show you guys an example. So I'm gonna leave them all unchecked. Uh, leave the keywords blank and just press search. So all these themes that are showing up, you can, whoops, you can take a look at and sort of see if they're the theme that you would want for a website. So let's just scroll down and let's stop here. Let's do preview for our current website. So preview will sort of show us what the theme would look like. This is actually a really cool looking theme. I really like it. Uh, so the preview gives us a, you know, what it might look like if you were to use this theme on your website. And well, why not? Let's just try it. So you could press install here. And then you press activate. All right, let's see what happens. So now this is the new theme activated on our website. So it's actually a really cool looking theme. Uh, you know, it still says Michael Mar Photography along the top. Um, this thing, you know, in the original theme we were using, there wasn't, there wasn't this thing, but I'm sure with this website, there will be something in the back end where you'll be able to manipulate this or change it how you want. As you can see, the pages I had from before are still here. And the content sidebar is still here. And there's actually the footer one too. So actually the transfer went over pretty well. Uh, let's go back to the home page. And let's go back to the back end to appearance. And this is something that happens not with all themes, but with some of them. So under appearance, there's all these tabs that are usually here. And then you see this one for parabola settings. Parabola is the name of this theme. So if we press here, this is, well, actually this, this theme is actually, uh, really detailed. There's a lot of different options here. So that's actually really cool. But yeah, you can come here. See, for example, I've never used this theme before and I'm seeing this for the first time. And in, in a lot of these cases, it's just kind of a, you know, sort of explore and mess with and, you know, trial and error type thing. But, you know, there's a lot of things you can do here. Let's press on color scheme and see what happens. Whoa. All right. So... Let's press this one, basket case. Oh, I think that might mean it's already set. I was waiting for something to load. Let's see what happens. Nope, it didn't change anything. Let's see, do we have to save it? Load color scheme, okay. Okay. And here we have the new color scheme. So that was just an example. That's something specific to this theme, but uh, it's not universal. But just to show you one more example, let's go back to themes, add new, search again, and let's just do this one. This one looks a lot more maybe more casual. It could be for like a blog. It's called whimsical love. So maybe it could be like a romantic poet, poetry type blog. I mean, whatever you want, obviously, whatever type of website you're making, you try and look for the equivalent type of theme that would fit it. If you got a really technical blog, then you probably want something that looks very technical. If you have something about romance, then maybe this is more fitting. So let's just do one more install now. Activate.
Uh, customize, it's really cool, they have this button here. I'm guessing when you go to customize, it takes you to the, the theme. Oh, okay, I see what this is. Um, it's just a different way to customize your website from a different place. I don't, I'm not gonna use this, but again, it's something worth exploring. Let's just go back here, reload. And just like that, you have a totally different type of looking website. And again, you have the same pages right up here the widgets here on your sidebar and as you'll see here there's actually no second sidebar the the primary sidebar is the one on the right the second one doesn't exist and the footer widgets also don't exist so that's an example of you know all the widgets not necessarily transferring over but i mean just that's that's how easy to get different themes and there are lots and lots of themes to choose from now i'm going to show you how to get uh really really professional themes All right, so if you're watching this video on Udemy, just go to the description here and click on these two links here. Or if you're watching the video on YouTube or somewhere else, these links will also be right within the description, but go ahead and click on those. These two websites are the two places where I go for when I need a premium theme. Elegant Themes is absolutely fantastic for uh, really professional, really awesome looking themes that are really customizable. And it's pretty much, I'm a member of this site, so this is pretty much where I get all my themes. And then the Thesis 2.0 theme is really cool for if you have a very, very specific project in mind or you want something super customizable. So if you have a client that wants something very exact or you have a very, very specific you know, layout, color theme, exactly what you want your website to do, Thesis is a website I would recommend. It's actually really good for when you have clients who want a specific type of website with an exact layout, exact font, exact colors, things like that. This is what I would recommend. If you just want a awesome looking professional theme, uh, you know, designed by professionals, by professional graphic designers, but they're already pre-made and then you just go in and pick color, color schemes or whatever and then just kind of do your own layout stuff on your own, then I'd go with Elegant Themes. Elegant Themes is also really cool because they have a complete support staff. So a lot of times when you are trying to do something specific within WordPress or maybe a plugin isn't work or so doesn't work or something, plugins I'll go into later, by the way, uh, Elegant Themes has a support staff that'll help you out and they're pretty much always available. So in this example and for the website I'm going to build, which is Mike Omar Photography, I'm actually going to go with an Elegant theme because they are perfect for that sort of thing. So right now I'm going to show you how to install one of their themes. So here we're at the homepage of Elegant Themes. Uh, like I said, I really love this website. I love the themes that these guys offer. If you're here, just click on your themes and you can start scrolling down and seeing all the different themes that they offer for any type of website that you want. Um, any one that you like, you can just click on and learn more about. For example, this one right here is actually the theme I'm using for my photography school. And if you scroll down, you know, it sort of tells you a little bit about the theme, all the different things it can do, you know, the different color schemes, browser compatibility. Essentially, you can tell that when you get a theme from a place like this, it's going to have a lot more customizability, a lot more options. It's going to be compatible with a lot more people. You're going to have full support. That's that's kind of the reason behind uh, paying for a theme versus getting a free one. A free one might be buggy. There might be a lot of things wrong with it. If something isn't compatible with some kind of plugin or something, you may not have anyone to ask. You may have to either figure it out yourself or, you know, get a different theme. So that's one of the advantages of going with uh, one of these paid themes. Um, it's why I'm using it for my photography school. And actually, if you go to my main website, the make money from home lions club .com, this is actually a theme from elegant themes as well. If you go over here, here it is, uh, the preview for it from the website itself. It's called the corporation. And a long time ago, before I made the Lions Club, I was looking at this website, reading about this theme. I decided I liked it. But, you know, as you can see, when you click here, oh, wait, when, let's do a preview. When you click here, you can see the similarities between their sample website and then my actual website, the one that I use to this day. So if you're looking through, 
and you decide that you like one of the themes, you go ahead and become a member, whichever level membership you want to become. So you could go to plans and pricing. Uh, there's personal developer and lifetime access. Just read about the different ones. See which one uh, you think is good for you and go ahead and sign up for the website. I'm already a member, so I'm just going to log in and well, I'm going to take a look around, kind of figure out, wait, where am I? View our themes. I'm going to take a look around, figure out which theme I want to use for Mike Omar photography, which the point of the website is to display the photographs I take from taking my own online school. And by my own school, I mean, I'm going to be a student. The teachers themselves are the ones who know about photography. I'm going to do the whole experiment myself and go ahead and learn about photography as well. But I'm going to make myself a website and that'll eventually be what Mike Omar photography becomes. And it'll be using one of these themes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in, pick whichever theme I like. And then when I pick the one I like, it's going to have me download that file and it'll be a zip file. It'll just be one file. and I'm just going to save it to my desktop. And once I have it saved to my desktop, I will resume again and I will show you how to upload that theme onto your website if you decide you want to get an elegant theme or a theme from somewhere else like, uh, you know, the thesis 2.0 theme, whichever one you want. The way these themes work is you don't get them, you don't get the theme directly on your website from the back end of your website. You actually download the theme and then re-upload it. And I'll show you how to do that in the next screen. Oh, so I should have pointed this out earlier, but I was looking through the different uh, categories here. And if you are making a photography website, then it's supposed to make sense to look through the portfolio uh, themes that they have. So I'm going to be picking one of these. Um, probably, let's see which one stands out. I think this one looks pretty good for a photography website, for one to display your photography. I'm going to press here press live theme demo. So this is pretty much uh, an example of the actual website and what it would look like. Um, I mean, this one looks pretty good. It's got a, it's got a way to scroll through different websites. It looks really nice. It looks really professional. It has got, I actually really like this one. So I think I'm going to use this one as the theme I download and upload to Mike Omar photography. So once you see me completing the the, the website, it's going to look something like this. Actually, let me take one more look. Uh, themes, portfolio. I mean, a lot of these look really cool. Uh, like I said, this is the one I'm actually using for the school itself. This one looks really cool too. Um, maybe I'll go with that one instead. Either way, we'll see. I'm going to look a little bit longer. This one Let's see, press here, live theme demo. I mean, this one looks really cool too. You can scroll through the different photos like this. I mean, there's a lot of really cool ones, but go ahead, take a look. If you like one of these scenes, I definitely recommend uh, working with this company anyway, because of the support. And I will meet you at the next screen once I finally choose. Okay, I figure I'd just show you the entire process. So now I'm logged into Elegant Themes and I'm at the page where you actually download the files. So I looked around for a while and the one that I finally want to do is Envisioned. So I'm here. This is the Envisioned file. I download it, download the theme package. I'm going to save it to my desktop. And there it started downloading. In fact, it's already done downloading. So close here. And here's the file. It's just a zip file. You don't have to open it. You don't have to do anything. It's right there. Now I will go back to the back end of Mike Omar photography. Here we are still in the same section, appearance and themes. And here I'm going to go back to add new. But instead of searching for a free theme, I'm going to upload one that's already saved onto my computer. Choose file. Let's go to desktop vision zip open install now and activate and now 
and we go over here and upload this again. I now have this professional, obviously it's not filled out. As you can see though, the pages came over, the widgets came over, everything, but obviously it still doesn't have any photos. But this is a theme that I'll be building out my website on. And just like the other one I showed you, when you go here, it has Envision themed options. And there's obviously for, something for you to explore on your own, and I'm eventually going to have to go through all this and figure all this out. But you're going to see that there's a lot more customizable features with one of these professional uh, paid for themes and one of the free ones. But that is how you pick your theme. And whether you want a free one or a paid one, that's how you do it. All right, so we've got a lot of the basics down. Uh, one more thing I want to go over is the basic settings that you want to manipulate for your WordPress website. And those can all be found right here under settings. And I'm going to go through each of these one by one and sort of show you how it all works. Oh, what's going on? There we go. So Mike Omar Photography and for all your photography needs, if you remember, this is actually what we set up when we were installing WordPress and this is where you can change it back up. So right here with this theme, it's just going to have their, uh, their image that then you have to replace later on at the top. But if you were using another theme, it would say Mike Omar Photography for all your photography needs. And then if I were to want to change this tagline or take it off and then come down here and save it, it would update right along the top here. Let's see what else. Your website URL, site address, that's all fine. The email address, um, that's important because WordPress will give you notifications about comments or things like that, maybe updates, and they'll go to your email address, so make sure that's correct. Uh, all this stuff is fine. Obviously, read all, through all these things a little bit more closely, but I just want to kind of move through it quickly so you know you don't get bored. I just want to point out the most important things. Default post category, once you start having categories, you might want them to all fall under a certain category by default. Convert emoticons, post format, standard versus all these different ones. Uh, again, just sort of look through all these things. Take a look. If you don't understand what everything is, that's fine. All this stuff is fine as it should be. Reading. Reading actually has a really important one. So, for example, um, WordPress, like I've said, is blogging software. So the default setting is as you add posts, uh, you know, week after week or day after day, month, whatever it is, month after month could be as sporadic as you want, but every post you add will eventually be the top post on the main page and they'll keep getting pushed down as you add more and more posts. If you have a blog, then that might be what you want, but if you're just trying to set up like a static website and not a blog, then what you could do is you could go here to reading settings and instead of the front showing your latest posts, you can make it pick a static page, which can, which can be any of your pages or any, uh, oh, front page, post page. Yeah, it can be any post or any page. So, no, I'm sorry, I think it can only be just any page. So, for example, right now it's just showing the latest post, which is this is my post. Uh, let's make it display one of my pages, which, as you recall, the pages are right here. So, contact me in sample page. And I'm going to make one more real quick just to reinforce the last lesson. This, this is the page I want on my home page. Welcome. By the way, remember it was saying categories? You can actually set the category. Where is it? Ah, whatever. It's something we'll look at later. But there is a way to, oh, you can't categorize this because this is a page. You can categorize posts, but I'll show you how to do that later. Let's just press publish. Published. Here, because we touched on the topic, let me just do that real quick too. Posts. Here is post number seven. Welcome. So here is the categories. Right now it's uncategorized. That's the only category that exists. Uh, my photos, let's make that a category. Add new category, check it, and press publish. So that's how categories work. And the point of categories is if you go back to appearance and then to widgets, 
uh, you can make categories one of the things in your sidebar. So let's reload this. Categories. So there's on categories and there's my photos. And every post in my photos will show up when you press my photos, just like in uncategorized. Okay, but sorry for that detour. Let's go back to what we were doing. So settings, reading. I want to pick a static page and I want it to be, this is the page I want on my home page. Press save changes. Now, as you can see, this is the latest post. When I reload this, oh, sorry, but that's just under my photos category. When I reload, oops, when I go to the home page, this is the page I want on my home page, and that's the only thing that will display on my home page. So that is one way if you just want the same uh, page to always show up on your home page instead of the post that you're updating, that's a way to do it. And this is where you set that up. Again, there's more options here. How many, you know, if you decide to do a blog and you want the post to show up, how many posts show up on the front, whether you want the full text or the summary. Um, you know, again, go through all these one by one, but it's a good area to, to know exists for uh, updating your website. Discussion. This is all for uh, when you put up posts and people comment and discussions start. These are the different options for, you know, how all that works, whether you're notified, how many comments are allowed, when do comments become closed. Again, um, look through all these one by one and kind of decide what you want for yourself. But there's a lot of options here. Media. This is related to images. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to upload images now. I'm going to show you that in the next lesson, but that's what this is related to. Again, once you... A lot of this stuff may seem overwhelming, but once you start using this more and more, you'll one, find that it's not as hard as it seems, and also you'll find that a lot of this stuff you never have to touch anyway, like the default settings are absolutely fine. <clears throat> and the last one is permalinks. Permalinks is actually really important for SEO purposes. So I'm going to show you something. When we go here to the website, let's click on uh, the sample page. And you'll see that the actual URL is michaelmarphotography.com slash question mark page ID number two. It's really ugly and that's actually not good for SEO. And the same thing would happen for posts. If we go to posts, my photos, and then here's post number seven, and actually go to that post. Look up here, it's slash question mark P equals 13. One, not very attractive. And two, not search engine optimized, search engine friendly. So for example, if we wanted to rank, let's say just randomly, we wanted to rank for number seven, uh, it would be good that this says number seven here. We would want number seven to be up here, which it's not. Again, I'm gonna go over all this later, but another place we want number seven to be is right here. And by number seven, I mean this exact text, not the actual number seven. So maybe a better example is if is post were the keyword that we wanted to rank for, we would want this to say is post. And that would be a much more powerful uh, SEO trigger. So what we, we're going to do is we're going to go over here to permalink settings and we're going to make it so that the default setting makes it so that every page and every post that you create automatically is SEO optimized. So we're going to click on post name and save changes. So I'm going to show you what happened. Let's uh, add a new post. Let's add a new one. And this one we're gonna we're gonna name the title of the post uh, my favorite, or let's put it like top camera reviews because that's an actual keyword that someone might want to rank for. Now let's capitalize this so it looks nice. Top camera reviews. These are the, the best cameras on the market. Etc. Let's put in my photos again. Publish. So this again. And actually, so we can get to the post easier. Let's go to appearance widgets. 
and recent posts. Well, let's put it right at the very top. Again, I'm doing a lot of this stuff just to reinforce the past lesson. So reload here. Recent posts, the one we just made, top camera reviews. And here's the post that we just made. But if you look at the URL, it is now a lot prettier. It's not P equals, you know, some random number. It's top camera reviews. And that'll just make your website look more professional. It'll be more search engine optimized. It'll be nicer. So we want to do that. And that, for the most part, you have all the basics down in the final lesson of how to make this website. Not the final lesson of the whole course, but of this website. I'm going to teach you how to add photos, uh, how to make money from this website, you know, if you want to, how to add a PayPal button, maps, contact form, basically take this basic, basic website and make it a lot more professional and clean it up. All right, guys, thank you for watching. In the next lesson, we will complete this website, add all the finishing touches, all the other things you need to know for how to complete a website. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them under the video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You can also email me, I can answer you there. And uh, be sure to subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, this is Mike Omar from www.makemoneyfromhomelionsclub.com. In the last lesson, I was showing you guys the basics of how to use WordPress on this website we're developing, MikeOmarPhotography.com. I showed you how to add posts, how to add pages, how to modify the sidebar with widgets, and how to change up the theme to different themes. And this one, we're going to go over uh, a few more advanced concepts. I'm going to show you guys how to add links. You can add links to posts or to your sidebar, to your pages. I'm also going to show you how to add photos to your website. Um, I'm going to show you how to add social media buttons to post to the home page wherever you want. I'll show you guys how to add a contact form to your website so that instead of listing an email address, you can just have them fill out a form, press the send button, and that'll go straight to your inbox. I'll also go over a little bit of e-commerce with you by showing you how to add a PayPal button. So if this website ends up being one of the freelancing websites and you're charging $500 per website, you could have a website, I'm sorry, you could have a button there right on your sidebar where they click on it and then they can pay you $500 through PayPal, which they can pay you through credit card, and that'll go straight to your account. Also, if this ends up being a uh, photography services website for you, you can also use the PayPal buttons as well. I'll show you how to do that, and you can set any price you want. Um, for those of you that are building a website for your own business and you have a location, I'll show you how to get uh, Google Maps on there and set up a tab for Google Maps. Um, if you're developing a blog or something where, something where you want to stay connected with people who might be interested in your services or simply what you have to post, I'll show you how to add a newsletter or mailing list sign up form. And it could be one of those sign up forms that's always there or one of the pop up sign up forms. I'll show you how to, add, how to add both of those. And then also, if you are building this website for photography as either a services website or simply your portfolio, I'll show you how to add an affiliate link to your sidebar. So you could connect to the photography school and then if anyone clicks on that link, goes to ph photography school and becomes a member, you'll make a commission and that'll be a, a form of passive income for you. So in this lesson, there's going to be a little bit of everything depending on what you want, but knowing how to do all these things will really help you out in the long run because it'll essentially teach you all the things you need to know no matter what kind of website you want to build. So let's get started on completing this website. All right, so in the last lesson, I have a bunch of just random stuff that I was showing you to just give you an example of how it all works, like all the stuff in the sidebar and everything. But this time, let's start really uh, figuring out exactly how we want to do the layout of this website. So website slash WP dash admin, put in your username and password, and I'll see you at the next screen on the back end. OK, so here we are on the back end. Uh, let's go to pages and see what we have. So pages right now, we have contact me, sample page. This is a page I want on my home page. So let's just do a quick edit here. Let's just actually call this welcome. Welcome update. All right, give it a second. 
welcome to my website. I will be happy to make you a website uh, or, you know, take photos for your engagement, wedding, etc. Pretty much whatever service you provide or whatever this website it is that it does, you just write whatever it is that you want. So that's just a quick example. You know, you could it could be a freelancing website. It could just be like, take a look at the great photos I've taken. This is my blog about cars. You know, whatever it is, it's just a welcome screen. That's going to be on your home page update. All right, now let's add a. Let's add a new page. It's going to be the about page about me. I am Mike. Publish. Mm. Sample page is the one that came with WordPress. Let's trash this. Okay, contact me. It's already set. Um, Feel free to contact me about anything out, anything at all on my contact form below. Or, sorry, by filling out my contact form below. And later on, I'll show you how to, how to add that contact form, but let's just leave this set up for now. Update. Let's see, what else do we want to add here? So right now, we're just kind of doing the frame of uh, what this website will eventually be, map. This is the location of my business. And then we're going to put a Google Maps right here, one of the interactive ones. But again, I'll do that later in the lesson. And then add new samples of my work. Here are samples of my work. And then this could be you know, other websites, you know, websites I've made. It could be photos, photos you've taken, etc. Um, publish. And again, I'm going to fill this out in a bit, but you know, just to give a quick example. And let's do a rates page. Rates uh, for a website. I charge $500, which if you've ever looked into having someone make a website for you, $500 is actually a really good price uh, for an evening of my photography services plus, you know, all prints or whatever it is that you do. Uh, let's just say $1,000 to say something. For both, only... $1,200. So yeah, I mean, whatever type of business you decide to make, you can always make a website for a person and put all the photos you take of them on there. There's all kinds of things you can do, but this is just it for now. Publish. All right, so let's see what this looks like. Down here, visit site. Okay, awesome. So these are all the pages that we just made. Welcome is the page that we're on. Oh, okay. This is a home. This is a home page. Welcome to home page because there's nothing here. But we we eventually want this one to scoot all the way over here, and we'll find a way to do that. About me, it's fine. Contact me. Okay, it all looks pretty good. Uncategorized. Okay, so for some reason the um, the categories are showing up here. We want to take that off eventually. Again, everything works a little bit different, so it's going to be a little bit of discovery. I guess my photo is another category we made in the last lesson. We also want to get rid of that. And then over here on the side, we can do a bunch of different stuff here. So hold on, let's see what we do. First, let's go to appearance and, and widgets. And we're going to get rid of all of these just to clean it up a bit. Let's get rid of this, 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 this. And actually, we're only going to put one there, and it's going to be the text. So let's put that there, one text widget. And we're going to make, this is where we're eventually going to put the buy now button, buy now. 
to purchase a website for $500, please click here. And uh, a little bit later in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to add that PayPal button. But for now, let's just save it. Close this up. Go over here. Refresh. And you'll see that there's now only one button here. Content sidebar, let's keep, let's get, take this off too. So Twitter, take this off, refresh, whoop, refresh. And now there's, oh, now there's all these on the footer. Hold on. That's odd, why did those show up? Okay, oh, here we go. Nope, this is in it. Inactive sidebar. Pages in the footer. Let's reload. All right, we got to figure out how to move these two, but I'm going to figure that out in a second. But for now, you kind of see how to start to frame your website using pages with all these things that you want. Okay, so like I've mentioned earlier, making a lot of these small modifications uh, just vary how you do it depending on what theme you're using. If you're using a theme from Elegant Themes, they actually have a really cool dashboard, uh, like control panel from here. You go to Appearance and then the name of the theme, Theme Options, and you press here. And there's just a ton of different, different, a uh, ton of different modifications that you can make from here. That usually, with a free theme, you probably have to go into the code or sort of figure it out a little bit on your own. But with these, you just have a ton of options from right here. But before we get into this, let's um, let's go over some basics. So we'll go to Pages. Go to pages. All right, and let's go to about, well, let's go to samples of my work. So I'm going to show you how to add a link. So websites I've made. Let's uh, link to my main website, make money from home Lions Club. So highlight the whole thing, and then you're going to go to this button right here. It's going to ask you the destination URL. So make make money from home lions club .com. And then you have the option to open link to a new window or tab. So I'm going to press yes. The point of this is so when they click on the link, instead of it changing the page you're on to that page, it's going to open it in a new tab. So add link and you'll see that that now is a link. Let's make one more Google. Do, 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 do. Google.com, add link, and update this page, right? So we go over here, reload this, or actually let's just go straight to that page. So samples of my work, and here are samples of my work websites I've made. Make money from Home Lions Club, links to my website, and Google links to Google. So that is how you add a link. And actually, let me just show you a few other things that you can do. Like this is all basic stuff, you know, boom, make it bold. I've made, let's make it italic, this italicized. This is crossed off, highlight it, cross it off. So there's just a ton of stuff you can do and you can start experimenting with stuff. This is all, you know, basically the same kind of stuff you would see in Microsoft Word. It's not that different. There's a lot of extra buttons here. These extra ones come with, um, with elegant themes. If you have a free one, it might not have these options, but it's just a way you can add drop boxes and little windows and make it a little bit cleaner, but it's all the same kind of thing. So let's press update. And again, once I finish this video, I'm going to go back and like really fill all this out and make it nice and add the wording correctly and everything. But this is just to give you an idea of how it all works. Reload. Here's samples of my work in bold websites I've made. This is crossed off. So now let's go to about me. You can go to the back end, go to pages and get to the about me page or right from this page, you could just put edit this page. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to add a photo. So what you do is go over here to add media. 
Upload Media Files, Select Files. I'm going to go to Desktop, and I'm going to go to a picture of me, Mike, Mike.jpg. Open. And you can do all these options from here, or you can do them all from the page. So I'm going to do them. Insert on the page. And there's my photo. So now I'm going to click here. We're going to have this little thing right here. Press that button. It's going to be all these options. I can make the photo bigger or smaller. Let's just leave it full size for now. Title, mic, alternative text, mic. That's uh, the text that will display when you scroll over. This is a photo of me. Link URL. Uh, so let's have this link to, uh, well, I guess I'll just make it the Lions Club. Or actually, I'll have it linked to MikeOmarWebsites.com, which is my sample website of you know, my freelancing website. So let's just do that. And then advanced settings, just so you'll see them. With, let's make it, let's make it a lot taller. So you'll just see the difference. So this is actually going to be a distorted image. Uh-huh. Styles, advanced link settings, uh, open link in a new window. So when you click on it, it doesn't change the, the page that you're on. It actually opens in a new page. Update. See, there I am all distorted very long update and now let's view the page and that is how easy it is to add an image and then like I because I said it that way when you click on here it opens to a new website and this is my old website Mike Omar websites how to make a blogger website if you decide to do a freelancing website uh, this is the website you should study all right so Let's go back to the home page and I'll show you a few more examples of how to keep modifying this website. So now I want to show you how to add uh, links or images to a widget on the sidebar. See the widgets on the sidebar actually work with HTML which means that you need to know a little bit of code to add links or images there and I'm going to show you what I mean right now. So if you go to appearance and go to widgets Here is, here's a text, text button right here. And this right here actually operates on HTML code. So as you can see, like, there's no way to upload an image here or to add a link, anything like that. It works on, uh, HTML code. So I'm actually going to show you, well, first I'll just show you the standard way. Let's say you want to add a link, right? So let's open a new tab and we're going to put HTML link code. And we're going to add the word blank because blank is the part of the code that makes it open in a new tab. So what you want to do, here's a sample one right here. This is an example of HTML code. So copy this, come over here and paste it in. And we're going to put automatically add paragraphs because if we don't press that, everything is going to scrunch together. So that is an example of an HTML link. So press save, I'll close this, reload this, and now you'll see that that link is right there. So when you press it, it goes right to that school where you can learn a little bit about HTML. But I'm going to show you another cool trick. So we go, let's go to pages again. And let's go to the about me page. No, 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 actually, let's go to the samples of my work page. Let's go to samples of my work. Whoop. Whoops. Samples of my work. And here you'll see all these different types of, you know, text and links and all the different things I've done. So this is the visual editor, which means this is what it's actually going to look on your website and you don't see any of the code. But WordPress is really cool in the sense that you can work like this on your visual editor. But at any given moment, you can go to the text editor, which is what the actual code looks like. So I know all this stuff that you're looking at, you're not actually going to see right now. Or you're not going to understand it right now. But this is what the code looks like that tells the website how it should display things. So, for example, this right here is actually the same code that we use right now on the widget uh, for this for this uh, link right here, the Make Money From Home Lions Club. So... For example, 
if we come over here and we know that we want something like this to show up on the sidebar, we can do it here on the visual editor. So let's make a link to Yahoo. Let's say we want a link to Yahoo on our sidebar. Here's Yahoo. Highlight it. Create the link. Yahoo.com. Press the open link in a new window and tab and add the link. So this is how it'll look visually on your website. Then go to the text editor. And this right here, copy it, is how it looks like in HTML. And no matter which one you're on when you save this or update it is fine, right? So we update it, we can view the page. There's the Yahoo link. When we click on it, it goes to yahoo.com. Whoa. Then we go to appearance widgets. And here we are in the text and you can paste that code directly because you already know that it's correct. Save it. Reload here. Oh, reload here. And you'll see that new link right here. Yahoo, press it. And once again, it'll open to the Yahoo homepage. So that is how you can use this uh, text widget that's actually really versatile. You can use it for all kinds of things. And later on, I'm going to show you how to use it to add the contact form, how to add that button. Actually, let me show you how to add that image real quick using the same trick. So you could always go here and put HTML image code. And once again, you'll end up at one of these types of websites that'll show you all these different ways to add, you know, images and stuff like the code that you need. Or you can use that same trick I was showing you earlier, which let's go back here. Let's go to pages. go to about me see here we are in the text so this is what the code looks like let's go to visual let's once again modify this so I look normal again let's make it just a little bit smaller let's go to advanced settings let's make the height uh, I don't remember what the original height was but let's just guess let's make it like half of let's make it like 120 Press update. There we go. Now I look a little bit stretched out the other way, but that's fine. Go to text. Let's copy all of this. Update it. Again, you don't need to understand this stuff. You just sort of need to know how to manipulate it. Appearance, widgets. And let's put the image in between these two links. So paste it in. I know it looks really scary, but I mean, I don't know this coding stuff either. I just know how to uh, get around it and make it work for me. Reload. And there it is. To purchase a website for 500, what we originally had, that original link we had, now a photo of me that's still a link because that was the, uh, the way I set it up at the beginning and also this link to Yahoo. So that is how you can add links, how you can add photos, and also a simple way to, if you for some reason you need the code instead of just using the visual editor, you also have a simple way to do that as well. So if you're using a regular free theme, uh, there's a few things that would be a little different right now. Uh, first off, all these uh, pages would have uh, comment boxes at the bottom of them. And usually you don't want a comment box at the bottom of any of these. You don't want comments to be enabled. So what you would do is you would just go to pages over here. You would go to quick edit and uncheck all of these. So uncheck allow comments. Come here, quick edit, uncheck allow comments. And you would just update all of them so that there won't be the comment boxes. By default, because this is an elegant theme, there's no comment boxes on the pages anyway, which is what we want. But if you're using a regular theme, then that's how you would do that. That's how you would get rid of these comment boxes. In fact, let me go to a post so you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Let's go to appearance, widgets. Uh, let's add where our posts. Recent posts. Go over here. 
So also, it's kind of cool that I'm doing this because you see just how quickly I can manipulate everything. So now the post should be in the sidebar. Let's reload this. Scroll down, recent posts. Top camera reviews and leave a comment. So this box would usually be under the pages as well, but you go back to pages and that's how you would get rid of those comment boxes. Also, earlier I was talking about how to put these, oh, also the categories shouldn't show up here. They, for some reason, do in, uh, in elegant themes, but we're gonna figure out how to get rid of those in a minute. But if you want all of these pages in a different order, that's actually really easy to do as well. Go to quick edit and you could put you know, make this order number one, update it. Let's say you want samples of my work to be some different order. Whoops, I didn't mean to press that, go over here. Once again, you wanna to go to quick edit, order number six. Let's say you want that to be order number two. And also while you're here, you may as well take a look at all of these different things, like the date you published, if you want it to be password or private, status published versus pending review versus draft, a uh, template that depends on what theme you're using. Some have different templates you can use. Some, you know, there's just one default template that always happens. If it has a parent page, there's a bunch of stuff to discover. And I really encourage you to go ahead and look into that stuff. But for now, these are just like the main things that people are trying to do. Setting up, you know, so that these are in a specific order that they want. And also that they don't have comment boxes at the bottom. So that is how you would do that if you had a regular theme. Because we have an elegant theme, I'm gonna show you that uh, additional options area that they include, which is actually really cool, which is a big part of the reason that I'm a fan of their themes. All right, so for the additional options that you would get if you have an elegant theme, you go to appearance here, and there's gonna be the name of your theme. This one's called Envision, and then there's gonna be theme options. So just real quick, I wanna show you just uh, how much you can manipulate a lot of this stuff. So here we are at general settings. Uh, the logo is actually this Envision one that they include right here, but let's just upload image. Uh, so I already have my the photo of me in here. This is in our media library. So, you know, I'm just going to put use for logo. But of course, actually, let me show you how to do it differently as well. So that was one way if you're going to upload, if you're just going to use a photo that you've already uh, uploaded onto this website. But let's just select a file as if I hadn't selected one before. So you can use an example of that. So if you if this is a file that you want for the logo, use for logo. And it's right there. Favicon, Favicon is just that little thing right here, the little logo, we're not gonna worry about that. Um, color scheme, let's make it red. Um, what's also really cool about this is if you go over these little question mark buttons, it's gonna give you an explanation of what every single option does. So there's a lot of things you can customize over here. Uh, show Twitter icon, let's enable this. Show Facebook icon, let's enable that. Uh, Twitter profile URL, so Mike Omar 9999, actually, uh, Facebook, I believe it's facebook.com uh, Mike Omar Lions Club, I'm actually not sure about that, I don't remember what it is, number of posts displayed on category page, basically a bunch of different options that you can see. Use excerpts when defined, Google font subsets, custom CSS. This is all stuff you should look into, start learning about, but right now for just showing you the basics of how to construct your website, it's not necessary. Let's press save. Let's reload this. <laughs> this is actually really not a good idea. This is not a good logo, it's just a photo of me. But if I had a logo, I'd show you that option. And actually you can see right here, that the Twitter and Facebook options are right there. So let's press it. Nope, uh, that's not the right URL. I'll have to fix that later. And then here is the Twitter button. It would go to my Twitter page. Let's see if it works. Nope, <laughs> I, uh, I just put my, my Twitter name. I obviously have to put the web address. 
So this is just another example of when you're constructing this, you're going to run into little errors and stuff, but I already figured out what it is I need to change. So here, uh, you know, I have to put the right address. This would be like twitter.com dash Mike Omar 999 or whatever it is. Uh, homepage, display content areas, display media section, display home cage, homepage quote. Uh, let's leave all these on. I don't know. Let's, let's just do some different stuff. Content area page one. I'm not even sure what all this stuff is. I just have to kind of experiment and see what happens. Quote text. This is just gibberish. Welcome to my website. Quote URL. Oh, that's if you want it to link to something. Number of posts. Exclude categories from homepage media. Maybe this is how we get rid of those categories. Exclude categories from homepage recent posts. That's what we were actually trying to do earlier. Let's press save. Go back here and see what happens. All right, so actually the categories are still here for some reason. And I don't know where that quote is supposed to show up. Maybe if, let's do this. Save, go over here, reload. Hmm. Again, it's all something, it's all stuff to work, to look into, but these are all really minor things and I don't really want to spend a ton of time on here. The featured slider. Oh, the one about me has a photo on it and welcome automatic slider option. So actually, if you remember when we were picking a theme, they did have a slider up here that looked really professional and really cool. And actually it's something that I do want to use once I complete this website. Well, let's just see what happens. Press save again, reload. This is really odd. Why is nothing happening? Either way, something I got to look into later, but navigation, exclude pages from the navigation bar. Okay, so I want all the pages in the navigation bar, so I'm gonna leave those, show drop down menus, I'm gonna disable this, display the home link. I don't want the home link because uh, my logo can be the home, home link, so that's all fine. Order pages by ascending, descending. Uh, okay, let's press save and see what happens. So this button should disappear. There we go, and it did. And now the welcome page is the home page, but I actually want it over here. We're gonna figure out how to do that later too. Categories, exclude categories from the navigation bar. I think this is what we wanted. Save, that should get rid of those. Good, we got rid of those. Now eventually I gotta figure out how to order these up again because I want them in a different order. I don't want this one highlighted when people get to the home page. But again, those are small details that eventually figure out how to fix. Layout settings. Oh, choose which items to display in post info section. So all these things are currently displayed. Show comments on posts is enabled, place sums on posts is enabled. So let me show you what they're talking about here. Here's post number seven. Posted by M on January 31st and my photo zero comments. So let's say I just want the author, not the date, not the categories, not the comments. Press save. Reload this. And now it just has posted by M. And actually let's say I don't want this post to enable comments. So, and these, honestly, I'm not really gonna even go over them. There's a bunch of different stuff you should look into. General settings, whatever. There's a lot of cool stuff here. Um, I'm sure once I come back and I really try and figure this out when I'm not recording, I'll figure out how to reorder these and then I'll make a cool logo and I'll eventually fill out this website, but you get the basic idea. Here's a bunch of different layout, navigation, color settings, SEO integration if you need to add extra code, a bunch of cool stuff. So I absolutely recommend elegant themes. Let's go back to posts here. Quick edit, let's not allow comments. Don't worry about what pings are, but uncheck it. Update. 
reload. Here's post number seven, and now there's no longer any uh, comments allowed. And also you notice all these links here, edit this page, all this stuff above here. This is only showing for me because I'm logged in and I'm the, you know, I'm the owner of this website. I'm the person that can modify this website. But if you were to log out and come back and visit your website, these links wouldn't be here. So you don't have to worry about that. But, uh, all right, let's move over. Let's move on to some more advanced concepts. I did want to point out one more thing before we move on to plugins, which by the way, plugins are very, very important and I'll show you how to use those in a minute. But remember I was telling you when you scroll over this, the alternate text is going to show up, which is Mike. But I also wanted to show you before I forget, uh, let's actually, actually just edit it from here. Edit this page, go to this photo. A lot of people want to know how to align this to a different section. So edit image. And again, this is one of those things that you can sort of uh, figure out if you just play around with this, but let's put this on the right instead of no alignment, update it, delete this, then hmm. let's put this right here, Mike, text, welcome to my website, that's that's a photo of me. By the way, if you notice, I just went over to text and started typing this over here. And that's because sometimes the visual editor can be a little bit uh, buggy, especially when you're working with images and you're trying to figure out where everything goes, etc. And actually, that's one of the nice things about going with text. Like this is, this doesn't mess up. This is exact. Exactly what you put in here is exactly how it'll display. Whereas if you start making this bold and doing different things. Sometimes uh, the visual editor is trying to figure out what you do and it messes up the code, but you can come over here and fix it. And trust me, this all looks crazy right now, but once you work with this a little while, you just kind of start to get a feel for what things do what. Like, you know, I don't understand how to make this code on my own, but here it says width equals this, height equals this. I understand that if I were to make this something crazy like 500, in other words, almost five times what it is and press update, I mean, let's just see what happens. And just seeing what happens is a great way to learn, by the way. Open this link in a new tab. Give it a second. And this was aligned all the way to the right. And then obviously I made this way too wide and it's actually going into the sidebar. So, you know, go to visual editor, press this, edit it. Instead of having it on the right, let's do it in the center now. And let's go to advanced settings and make the width something normal again. I hope I look normal. I don't even remember what the original uh, dimensions were. Update. Actually, looks pretty good. Update. Reload this. And there we are. Now I'm in the center. Um, this is no longer a link. Welcome to my website. That's a photo of me, etc., etc. But now you get the idea. So hopefully this is not just a lesson on what I showed you right there, but the importance of not being afraid to try things, just pressing different things, putting in some different options, exploring a little bit. You'll start to get a feel for how to use this, and that'll be really useful when you're trying to manipulate your website later on. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to really put in some more advanced, more professional looking things on this website. And the way we're going to do that is using plugins. Plugins are really, really cool. In the same way that there's a ton of free themes available that give you a different appearance for your website, plugins are little pieces of software that really just about anything you can think of, uh, someone out there has made a plugin for it. In fact, probably a lot of people out there have made different plugins for it, and they're all free, they're all available. And I mean, right now it sounds a little confusing, a little vague, but I'm going to show you how to use them right now. And the first example I'm going to use is uh, how to add social share buttons. So usually if you want to add social share buttons that look really cool for every post or every page, it would take a lot of coding. But with WordPress, you can go to plugins. Okay, so let's, first let's go to plugins. Uh, there's some default plugins that come here. Right now, they're not activated. They're inactive, but this is what they show. This is one to prevent uh, comment spam from your blog. 
So I would recommend activating it. Um, and there's instructions for how to do that. It'll walk you through it. Hello Dolly is just a silly plugin. It's just, it's just a, it's just a plugin that makes your website hello, say hello to you every time you go to the back end. It's just something silly that they have here that, uh, you know, you can activate it if you want. I think it's just an example, really. But whatever. We're not going to worry about these right now. They're not that important. Let's go to add new. <clears throat> and I know the one that I like is called Slick Social Share Buttons. I believe that's the name. Okay, so here it is. And this is really cool. Uh, again, like everything I'm showing you, uh, you should definitely sort of look into it a little bit more on your own, kind of start learning about all this stuff. But here's the rating. Here's the description. Details, if you want to see the details. I'm going to show you how to install it. So let's just press install now. Are you sure to want to install this plugin? Press OK. And let's activate the plugin. Let's activate. And so now you can either get to the settings here or you'll see that there's a new tab over here where you can start to modify this. Or sometimes that, you know, sometimes the button will show up under the different settings over here. It just depends. You kind of have to look for it. In this case, it made a whole new tab. So social buttons, let's go to social buttons. And these are going to show uh, share buttons for any post, any page on your website that you want. So let's do this slide out from the top left, uh, offset 50 pixels, direction vertical, default skin. I want to check it, slide speed, whatever. Load open. That's fine. Let's save these changes. Uh, where do we want these share buttons to show up? I want them to show up on the home page and I want them to show up on posts nowhere else. So, well, let's continue. Let's have it have a Twitter, a Facebook, Google plus one. Once again, there, there's just so many different custom customization options that you can have, but let's just, yeah, you can change the order. It's just really cool what plugins can do. Someone out there just did a ton of work, did all this coding that I'd never be able to, you know, never be able to do. Let's pick one more. Let's pick a uh, pin it, whatever. Uh, and there's all kinds of additional stuff here. There's always more options. Let's just press save changes so I can show you what this does. Give it a second while it saves. All right. Now let's reload the home page. And here is this, uh, really cool share button. You can close it or open it back up. So for example, these are little things that you might have to deal with. Look, this button is just a little bit too high on this page, right? So let's go over here, offset. Let's just do it on the left instead of the top left. Save changes. Reload this. And there we go. Now it looks really, really nice. And you press it in here, it goes, but it loads open. Now that's what the load open option was. So now, you have all these really cool share buttons, which is really, really cool because it's obviously something that would be very difficult to program, but with a plugin within two minutes, you have it all set up. And now if we go to a regular page, it shouldn't show up, which it didn't. But now if we go to a post and obviously posts are the things that we want to share that we want people to share, there's that option again. And obviously you can have it anywhere on your screen. You can have it come from the bottom. There's a ton of different options here. So that is the power of plugins. And just to show you a little bit more, let's say you didn't know what slick social buttons, uh, slick social share buttons were, but you knew, you knew you needed a social, a social button plugin. Just come here, go to add new and let's put social media share buttons, press enter. And it's just going to return with a ton. Whoops with just a ton of different options and you can go, you can open the details in a new tab. Plugin has not, so look, it's got, it's just got all the information, how to install it, FAQ. There's a support page for this one. So, you know, let's do social media feather. I don't know what it is. Let's press details. 
description screenshots so you get to see photos okay so these are really cool um i guess you have all these different options for how you want it to look like i said there's just tons and tons and tons and stuff to explore here and obviously like everything some plugins are better than others uh some are worse than others uh in some cases a plugin will simply not be compatible with your theme that you chose and you just got unlucky and either you can figure out a way to make it work or you have to pick a different plugin but that's the power of plugins and yeah if you want to add this really cool button to your posts or your pages wherever you want uh you know how to do that now okay so that was to add social media share button so other people could share uh you know your post or your website whatever it is to whatever social media network that they like and of course there's you know if you go back to social buttons and social buttons over here uh you'll see that you can add as many as you want to whatever you know you can add reddit dig whatever let's save it i mean it's just that easy that is the power of plugins reload Give it one second. And there's all these different buttons here. But now I'm gonna show you how to add social media buttons but to your own personal pages. So if you have a blog that uh, you have a Facebook page that it's connected to or you have some kind of business with a Twitter account that it's connected to, uh, I'm gonna show you how to add those buttons to your sidebar. So let's go to plugins again, just like we did earlier. These list the ones so you can tell this one's active and this one, these ones are not active. But let's go over here, add new, and I'm going to look for social buttons. Social buttons. See, this one has zero, so I'm not going to go with that one. I've actually done simple social buttons. I've actually, I've actually already found like a really cool plugin that I like and I don't remember the name of it. So I'm going to check one of my other websites real quick and come back. But the way I originally did this, the way I did my original search was either I just tried them out, tested them, see if, saw if I liked them and if they've worked. Or you could also just go to Google and put in what is the best, uh, you know, social media sharing buttons or what's the best social profile buttons and you'll see reviews and stuff. There's a bunch of ways to go about doing this, but let me find out which is the one that I like that I use on my Lions Club website. So moneyfromhomelionsclub.com. We go over here, scroll down. The, these are the ones that I thought looked really cool that looked really professional. So I'm going to show you how to add these. One second. Okay, so I just checked and that one is actually called the social links. Press enter. Install now. Are you sure you want to install this plugin? Press OK. Activate the plugin. Uh, the social links, go to settings, and actually, just to show you, where would you find this one? Maybe this one, I mean, oh, is that it? The social links option. So this is the other way you would get there. So remember, with every plugin, usually usually you can get you can always get there through the plugins page, but there's usually somewhere else where it shows up. And here it showed up here. So press here. Please enter the full URL to your social profile on your respective network. Okay. So this is actually a really easy plugin to use. Um, Twitter. Let's see. Make money from homelinesclub.com. Twitter. So I actually have these shortened, but you would just put Twitter. I'll just, I'll just do it like this. Twitter.com. Mike Omar. Nine 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 nine. I believe that is my Twitter. Let's find out. That is my Twitter page. Perfect. So whichever so you know, if you have, if you run a blog or a business, just whichever ones you want to use go ahead and put them in. So I'm going to put, uh, what else do I have? I've got my Gmail. Oh, so my Google Plus. So I already set these up so they're shortened up so I don't have to remember the URLs. That's why I don't know them. But it's makemoneyfromhomelinesclub.com uh, slash Google. This one I put in the twitter.com Mike Omar, but 
you know, you can set, you just put in whatever is the appropriate URL for you. Where is, I mean, they have every single one on here. Where's Facebook? Control will find Facebook. There it is. So Facebook. All right. Let's just use those three for now. Let's just say those are the only three uh, social media buttons I want to use. Icon size. Let's, let's put the biggest one just to show you the biggest one. Current window. I always like things to open in a new window. Check the box if you would like to add a link to the plugin under the widget. Uh, this is if you want to link to the creators of the of the widget. I'm sorry, of the plugin makers. I'm going to say no. Press save changes. And then, you know, every plugin you kind of sort of have to figure out how to use it. For this one, you just go to widgets right here. And you'll see that under the widgets, there should be a new one that is for these social buttons, the social link. See, this one wasn't here before. Now that we've added this plugin, it's there. So go over here, the social links, and let's just title it connect with me, save, go over here, reload this. By the way, this does look really silly that my face is here. Obviously, you would have a really cool logo here and you can, you know, I mean, if you want to make a logo for your website, you can just go to Google, type in something like freelogomaker.com and there's just a ton of them. And you can put in whatever the name of your website is and pick the different themes and stuff. Okay, cool. So check out this really cool widget right here. Connect with me. Press on Google. And boom, it goes to my Google Plus profile. So as easy as that. We now have the share buttons for whatever pages we want. And now on any page that you go to within the sidebar, there's these really cool buttons. And like I said, you can go switching them up however you want. Let's just put connect, save. Then let's go back here to the social link options. And let's say we thought those buttons were too big. Let's make it this one. Save again. Go over here. You know. Let's go to samples of my work again. And because now we're on a page, these no longer showed up, but the sidebar will always show up and you'll see that these are now smaller. Also remember that there were these buttons right here. That was a specific option for elegant themes. Uh, if you like those, and obviously you don't have to mess around with this plugin, but if you think these are better and you don't want these to show up anymore, if you remember from earlier, and again, I'm using this theme for the first time too, so I still don't know my way around all this part too well, but I remember from earlier that this is where you show the Twitter and Facebook icon, and I don't want those anymore. And actually, I want to go back to the original color, whereas I like the original color better, the default color. Go back down, save. Go over here. And there's the original color. And now you'll see that these buttons are no longer here. I'm going to go ahead and take my face off of there again, too. Or let's just press reset. Save again. Go over here. And back to that original one. All right. All right, so now I want to show you how to add a contact form. A contact form is essentially, you know, when you go to contact me, instead of saying contact me at Mike Omar at make money from home I want you, I want it to say feel free to contact me. And then you have one of those forms where people fill out their name, their address, their message, and then press the send button. You'll actually see on my main website, make money from home When you go to contact, uh, it's right here. Fill out your name, email, subject, and message, and then this little CAPTCHA that's to prevent robots from sending you messages once your website becomes more popular and then you press send. So this is actually very easy to do. Again, we're going to use a plugin. Those plugins, I mean, you're just going to find out that plugins, there's just plugins for everything and they're absolutely lifesavers. I don't know how to do any of this programming. I just know the very, very basics. And with plugins, I'm able, I'm able to make websites that are really professional or really cool. They're able to do everything. So plugins, add new. Again, if you weren't watching this, you would just put in contact form and 
you know, you would see all these different con whoops, all these different contact forms with their ratings, the details, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, one really popular contact form that I like that I don't remember how I found it. I'm sure I probably did a Google search to, to read different reviews, but the best one that I found is called Contact Form 7. Press Enter. And again, install now. Are you sure you want to install this plugin? Okay. Activate plugin. Uh, settings are right here. And also settings. Hmm. Where is the contact form? I mean, we already know this. It's it's somewhere. But whatever. Let's just get there through here. Contact form 7, settings. Contact form 1. This is just a default one it comes with. So, uh, the, you can modify these contact forms and you can learn a little bit of code and figure out how you want to do it. But actually, the default setting is completely fine. Um, Put in your email address right here. This is my email address, Michael Martin, make money from home lions club.com. From subject, I mean, this is, this is just a very, very basic one, but actually that's the only one I need. And this is what the email is actually going to look like from the name they put in and their email, the subject, the message body. And then this email was sent from a contact form on Mike Omar Photography. So this is really cool that it automatically labels what website this came from because once you own lots of websites, uh, you'll immediately know which website they sent you a message from. All this other stuff is fine. I mean, as you can see, we didn't, we didn't change anything at all. So let's go back to the top here. Copy this code and paste it into your post, page, or text widget content. So you can take this and put it anywhere. So we're going to copy this. I'm pretty sure we didn't change anything, so we don't need to press save, but I'm going to press save anyway. <clears throat> let's go to pages. Contact me. Filling out my contact form below. Enter, paste, update. Let's go back to my website, visit site. Go to contact me. And now I have this really, really cool contact form. And People put in their name, their email, their subject, and their message, and then they press send and it goes to your inbox. It goes to the email address that you listed. Obviously, when you do this, go ahead and test it out, make sure it works. For now, I'm going to assume it works because uh, I'm not going to go through the testing process during this recording, but go ahead and test it out, but it should work. And as easy as that, you know, you have a pretty professional looking contact page. And this is, these are the little tricks that eventually, you know, you remember this website at the beginning. Now it's starting to look more professional. Contact form, social media buttons, go to the home page, there's a share buttons, there's photos. So, all right, let's continue this process. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to add one of those interactive Google Maps straight on your website. Uh, if you're a business owner and you have a location, uh, if you have some reason you wanna show some location on your website, it's actually very, very easy to do. Even if you're a freelancer for photography or for making websites or both, you can put the location of the Starbucks you usually meet clients at, you know, something like that. So very easy to do. Let's open a new tab, Google Maps. Let's put a Google Maps here. <clears throat> Let's put in a Starbucks in New York City. Let's just pick one. doesn't matter. Let's go to this one. Okay. So let's say it's going to be location A. Actually, let's just in case. I don't want, I don't want it to show all these Starbucks on here and I'm not sure if it will or not. So let's just grab the address. I'm going to put this in. There we go. So let's say I want this map to show up on my website, but I want it to be a little bit further to show all of Manhattan. Let's do this, right? So we're going to go over here to this little button. So it says there it's link and then paste HTML to embed in website. So we're going to copy all this copy. That's the code we need. And let's go back here. This is going to go under map, right? So let's go to map. And again, you, you already know how to reach that through the pages over here on the back end, but let's just go to edit this page. And this is the location of my business. Now, Remember, this is the visual editor. 
uh, the code that we just got is HTML. So we're going to post it in here under text, right? Let's get rid of that. Paste it in. That is an awful lot of code. No need to worry about what it is. When we go to visual, it's actually just going to show this on the visual end, but you'll see how it looks on the website in a second. Press update. Now let's view the page and see what happened. So now you have this very, very cool map right on your website. And it's awesome because it's just like one of the Google Maps. It's, it's just like the Google Map on that page. You can scroll up, you can scroll down, you can zoom in, zoom out. You know, I mean, you can just do everything. Whoa. <laughs> Whoops. To view, you need the Google Earth plugin. Okay, whatever. We don't have the plugin. Let's reload this. But you get the idea. Directions. I mean, it just does everything. So, like I said, it's a really, really cool feature. And you immediately have an interactive map right on your website. So that's how you add a map. All right. Now I'm going to show you how to add a uh, sign up uh form for your website, which essentially can sign people up to be a part of your newsletter, whether it's weekly, whether it's just for announcements, whatever. It's something I highly, highly recommend, especially if you have a blog where you want to create a following, a business where you want a quick and easy way to talk to your audience or to your clients. Uh, it's just a very effective tool for all kinds of businesses online that you want to run, whether it's to remind people to visit your website when you have a new post whether it's to talk about promotions, whether it's to make an announcement, whatever it is, uh, it's just very, very effective for business. It's more effective than any social media because you get to send a piece of something, a piece of material directly to people's inbox. Everybody checks their email. It's pretty much considered the most effective way to reach people whenever you need to. And obviously I have a newsletter that I have for the Lions Club. I highly recommend it. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a really simple one. All it is is uh, every week I send out a newsletter that explains some kind of new method or, you know, a new technique, new strategy for making money online, just different types of tips and stuff like that. So on my website, you can see there's a sign up form here where they can submit. There's one on the sidebar where they can submit. If you go to any of my posts and, you know, click on it, they can submit their information here. Oh. They can submit their information here and that simply, you know, uh, puts them, makes them a part of my newsletter and now I have their email address. So whenever I need to send something out, I can press the send button. It sends out to all the people that have registered for my newsletter. So something I highly, highly recommend and actually setting up is very, very easy to do. I use a service called Aweber. So if you're watching this video, on Udemy or wherever, just go to the description. So for example, go to the description here and you could press on the link that says Aweber and you can sign up for that account. But I'm gonna show you how easy it is to uh, install this on a website and watch it work. I'm gonna show you how to do a regular form one, which is just one that's always there. And then if you were to, sh let's see, I'm gonna press new incognito window. If you were to go to the make money from home lines club.com for the very first time, which is what which is why I open this up in a new incognito window and press enter. You're going to see that within a few seconds, there's going to be a pop-up form to sign up for the newsletter as well. And this is all set up with Aweber, and I'm going to show you how to install that on your website uh, right now. So in another one of my lessons, I go over fully how to uh, sign up for Aweber, use it, etc. But essentially, once you go through the whole process and you do the entire process on their website, you set up your web forms, you set up your newsletters, you can automate the whole thing. At the very, very end, they're going to say, OK, depending on how you design your sign up form, whatever, here is a piece of code that you need. And I actually took those pieces of code and wrote them here. One of these is for the, fo the form that is just stable and steady on your website the entire time. The other one is for the one that pops up after five seconds. So, and also you choose how long before it pops up. Basically, like everything I've been showing you, it's completely user-friendly, completely customizable, but let's just copy these pieces of code. And what you're gonna do, go over here. You, look, you can go directly to widgets, which is where we wanna go. 
And this code is actually going to be, we're going to use a text widget. Again, it's actually, in my opinion, the most useful widget because HTML gives you the option to do whatever you want. So sign up for my free weekly newsletter. Uh, paste these two pieces of code. Again, it doesn't matter that it looks like this because it's going to display differently. This is a save button. Hold on. Save it. Close. And now let's open this in the incognito window so it so that the computer will think that this is my very, very first time visiting mikeomarphotography.com. The reason I keep doing it this is because I have it set so that only the very first time that you ever visit my website will that pop-up form show up. I don't want it popping up every single time someone shows up in my website. They'd probably get pretty annoyed. So mikeomarphotography.com. Press enter and let's see if this worked. All right, so there's the one that pops up. Again, all this text and what's sent to them, their thank you form, where they go, et cetera, the thank you page where they're sent to, all this stuff I set up on their website. And like I said, there's another lesson that I dedicate exclusively to AWeber. So if you wanna set up a sign up form or a newsletter, or whatever it is, you can learn how to do that here. And then this form is also right here. And again, you can change the colors and how it looks, all the buttons, it's all customizable, but that's how easy it is to set up sign up form, or I'm sorry, to set up a newsletter or a way to announcing. So any kind of business that you have, you know, if every now and then you need to make announcements for promotions or something changed about your business, uh, some kind of special, maybe just a weekly newsletter, maybe you just put up a new blog, just whatever it is, I highly, highly recommend right off the bat, especially if you're trying to set up a website or a blog that develops a bigger following over time, AWeber is a tool I highly, highly recommend. And it's one of the best tools I've used and I have to uh, keep promoting my online Lions, Lions Club uh, school. And also it's gonna be something that I'll be able to use to eventually promote the photography school that is in development right now that I'm developing this new set of how to make a website lessons for. So once again, I highly, highly recommend AWeber. If you're interested in setting up a newsletter, uh, go ahead and click on the link in the description and sign up. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to add a PayPal button to charge people for whatever it is that you're providing. If you don't have a PayPal account, go to the description. You could go, if you're watching on Udemy, go over here, go here and press on the PayPal button, or if you're watching somewhere else, uh, the PayPal link will be in the description. But go over here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a PayPal button. So what you wanna do, if you don't have a PayPal account, go ahead and sign up, it's completely free. If you do, just log into your PayPal account, okay? Then you're gonna press on Merchant Services, right over here. And you'll see there's a lot of really cool options here, but what we're gonna do is create payment buttons for your website. Here's a little peek into the world of e-commerce. Actually, if you're gonna start, if you're gonna have an online business and you're gonna outsource and you're gonna have to receive money for your services or send money because you're paying for something, maybe you're paying some software developer or something, you, you know, all the different things, PayPal is very, very useful. It's just so useful for sending and receiving money and not just in business, but you know, for rent, for, favors, people need money, whatever it is. So PayPal, I highly recommend. But back to the issue at hand, we're gonna create a payment button for the website. Uh, like I said, if you're doing photography and you're taking photos for people, it's whatever amount that you want. Um, if you're making a website, what I've done in the past is I charge $500 flat rate. So that's the example we're gonna do right now. But again, you can do whatever it is that you need to do. So add a PayPal button to your site create a button. I've actually changed the uh, interface since last time I did this, so I'm going to be sort of guessing along too. Uh, we're going to do the most basic one. Buy now, item name, website. Item ID, optional, not needed. P price, $500, flat rate. Currency, USD. Obviously, you know, depending on what country you're in, whatever, you can change that. Your customer's view is just a straight buy now button. Add drop down menu with price option, with menu. Maybe you have different levels of websites that you provide. Maybe if you're doing photography, there's different packages that you set up. One is the premium, one is the standard, you know, one is a ultra super platinum, gold, whatever it is. 
uh, add a text field. There's all these different options. Doesn't matter. Shipping for what I'm providing a website. There's no shipping cost, so add zero. Tax rate. I'm not gonna charge clients tax. Use my secure whatever. Track inventory profit and loss. Customize advanced feature again. If you're starting to set up a really complicated uh, e-commerce website, all those stuff will, all those things will come into play. Right now, this is just a very, very basic one that I'm setting up. So let's do this. Create button. And just as simple as that, select the code, copy it. Again, all this stuff is in HTML. So if you were to put this on a poster page, make sure to be on the HTML setting. We're actually going to put it in a widget. So let me log out of here. Let's go over here, go to widgets. What are the widgets we have right now? The newsletter, the social links, buy now. That's the one we set up earlier. Uh, that's, that's the example of the link that I had put in. That was the photo of me. That was the other link. We don't need any of that. Let's paste this in. Whoop. Press save. Close this. Visit site. And now when we go down here, here is the buy now button. To purchase a website for $500, please click here. And if someone has a PayPal account, they can pay you directly from the funds within their account. And also it accepts all major credit cards and a person can pay without even signing up for an account. So it's actually a very, very, very convenient way to charge people. So now when someone goes down, they click on this button. And they're redirected to this page where the amount being charged is $500. They can pay with a debit or credit card. Well, they can pay with their PayPal account by logging in. Or they can just pay with debit or credit card, prepaid gift card. They can, they can do uh, financing, bill me later. So there's all these different options. They fill all this out. And once they pay, that money goes into your PayPal account, which then you can transfer immediately to your bank account for no extra fees. Or you can use that money in your account for other uses. I mean, very, very useful. So that, in my opinion, is the best way to charge clients for whatever it is that you're offering. If uh, this is a business website or some website where you have a location, uh, submitting your website to Google and having it appear in the business listings is actually a very, very easy process. Just go to Google and put in uh, Google Business Maps, something along those lines, and they're going to pretty much invite you to submit your website and your business so that it'll be listed on their own Google Maps. So if you have a business uh, and you're, that's what you're making this website for, then I highly, highly recommend you go ahead and do that. Um, the last thing I want to show you is actually... It's actually going to be a little bit of an introduction into making money online. So if you are one of the people that uh, is watching this and building a website for your photography website, as in to display your photography or to do your photography services, uh, one way that you can make money passively is by promoting my photography school. My photography school is still in development, which is why I'm not revealing the URL just yet. But I will show you how to make some income Th this way. And the way it would work is you would have a link on your website that says, if you want to learn where, you know, if you want to learn how to become a photographer, uh, click on this link and sign up. And you could put something like, that's where I learned how to, how to take photos. That's where I learned the skills. I highly recommend the school, whatever it is that you want, set up that link. I'm going to show you how to set up that link. It's a special affiliate link. And when they click on that link and then sign up for the school, you're going to win a percentage of you know however much they pay depending on what package they buy or like whatever it is that they sign up for you will make a commission and that's actually one of the big ways that a lot of people make money online that's a big way a lot of people make passive income online so for example well, first thing you want to do if you're watching this on udemy or on youtube wherever it is again go to the description you know usually this is the default area go to the description and one of these links is going to say clickbank go ahead and create uh, press on the Clickbank link, link uh, sign up for account. It's completely free. And then I'm going to show you what to do next right now. 
Okay, so when you signed up for your account with ClickBank, you should have signed up and uh, made yourself a username. That username is very important for the click we're about to, uh, the link we're about to create. So because my photography school is not set up yet, I'm going to show you another ClickBank website I have, which is my how to become a ticket broker website, which is years and years and years ago when I started this whole business. The first thing I did was I was buying and selling tickets buying tickets online, selling tickets online for concerts and events and, you know, all kinds of different things. And I was making a profit because I would buy them the day the tickets were released. And then right before the event, you could sell them for more money. And that's a little bit of how, you know, I was, I was just making money when I needed it. And then I, because I couldn't find any information online on how to do that, I eventually made this, I wrote a book about my experiences and I actually sell it here. And this is actually a ClickBank product, which means, you know, someone can go here, you know, buy this product. And every time they buy this product, I make money. But it's also an affiliate product, which means if someone sends me a, a potential customer through their affiliate link and they come to this website and buy the product, I'll pay them a commission. And I set what level of commission I want to pay them. So... This is just an example, of course, and this is actually a much lower uh, ticket item price, but my photography school is going to be more expensive. And actually, you know, if you end up liking the photography school, you can make some passive income that way. Because when you show people your photography website or your services photography website, whatever it is, you could be like, hey, well, if you like my photos and you want to learn how to do it yourself, uh, a link to the photography school that I took is right on my website. So you can sign up through there. And then when they do, you make yourself a little bit of money. So that's the idea here. And actually, I'm going to have a, a tab here that's that's uh, named affiliates. So I'll be able to explain this again in more detail within that tab. But let's just go ahead and do it real quick. So go to dashboard. I'm just going to go ahead and do it there. Up, uh, pages, add new. Affiliates affiliates learn how to make a passive income by promoting my photography school photography school and here I'm gonna have all the instructions on how to do that but for now I'm just gonna show you how to set up that link so uh, I want to put the link in a widget and if you remember from the lessons um, the widget needs to have HTML, which I am just so bad at remembering what it is. So I'm going to use my same trick as always. But uh, here, here's what a ClickBank affiliate link looks like. It looks like this. Uh, my um, my username for this product is Musica9999. Probably for you know my photography school, I'm going to make my ClickBank user ID Musica9998 something like that, most likely. But uh, again, later on, once it's set up, I'll reveal that. But this is the link. And then whatever your name is, whatever your username is that you used, you would put it here. And that's how this link is going to track that it is a referral from you. So let's go back here and let's set up this link. So learn the art of photography at the best photography school that exists. <laughs> That's quite an endorsement and hopefully you feel that way once you take it. So make this a link, make this a destination and press open link in a new window tab, right? So that is the link that we want in our widget. So just like I showed you before, this is a little trick. That's the HTML code, copy it, publish this. Let's go back to the website. Affiliates. Like I said, eventually this tab will have all the instructions on how to do this properly and best advice, etc. But like I said, everything I'm doing today is just a little bit faster to kind of get to the point so that, you know, you learn how to do it and then, you know, you can you can do it at your own pace. But let's go over here. Widgets. Another text widget, like I said, it's the one I just always, always use because it I have exact control over what displays. Over here, 
paste and uh, take, all right, let's just title it something simple, photography school. Save it, close. So, so remember, this link is obviously, you know, it's something weird. It's not how to become a ticketbroker.net. It's this strange affiliate link, but watch what happens. I'm gonna save it, close here, go up here. <clears throat> Give it one second while it gets to the site. I don't know why it's taking so long. There we go. Photography school. Learn the, uh, learn, the, learn the art of photography at the best photography school that exists. Press the link and, whoa, that's weird, hold on. Okay, I just figured out what happened. So I went back to widgets and when I went to photography school, this set affiliates or affiliate or affiliates and maybe there's some kind of issue with whoever actually has that username, affiliate or affiliates. So I just replaced it with Musica9999, which essentially means I'm sending a referral to myself. But whatever, I'm just trying to do this for the example. <laughs> Obviously, you would put your own username here. And then this is, a, this is a username that refers you to the Ticket Broker book. But because the photography school is not set up yet, that's the one we're using for now. But that's to explain what this link is. Eventually, this one would be replaced which would, with whatever one I tell you is for the photography school. And this one would be your own username, so you get credit for that sale. So save it. Close this. Go over here. Let's reload this. And so this... Photography school, learn the art of photography at the best photography school that exists. Open it. And in this case, it sends you to my ticket broker website because that's how we just set it up. But usually, or after, once my photography school is set up, you'll want it to link to my photography school and then you'll have a chance to make yourself some passive income that way. That is uh, just a small peek into like my other school, which is how you can make passive income online. And I mean, obviously if you are you're watching that lesson as a part of that school and you eventually set up some art websites or photography websites and they start gaining traffic, uh, that would be, you know, that would be one monetization option for you aside from the usual tactics that I use, which was AdSense, Amazon, promoting other things. But, um, <clears throat> I mean, if you take a look at this website, you can see that in less than an hour, this is already a pretty cool looking website. It looks very professional. Obviously all the text and all the stuff, like it's not set up properly, it's not refined. You know, this is still not at the home page. If you remember when I uh, looked at this theme, there was a way to get a slider up here, which I still haven't decided if I'm gonna do that or not. Once I take my own photography school and I know how many photos I wanna display and like how I wanna set it up, I'll decide if I use that slider or maybe I make another tab for a gallery. I still don't know, but those are the options I have. And again, this is completely customizable. It may take a little bit of guesswork. Every now and then you'll you'll get frustrated because you'll run into some problems. But again, if you're using an elegant themes theme, go to their forums and take advantage of the of like the help uh, team that they have over there because they help people that don't know anything about this stuff that are complete computer dunces and just solve problems for them. So. You know, at the end of this process, I mean, I, I haven't uploaded any photos yet. That's still going to wait. But once you visit this website, you're going to see a complete website. But it won't be with anything additional than what I've shown you today. You've got your social share buttons here, which you can do just for the home page. You can do for every single page, whatever it is. You've got links on. Here's your sidebar, your ClickBank, your newsletter. You've got your connect buttons, your buy now buttons um you know posts there's just a ton of stuff and like i said anything else you might want to add any other ideas you have you can do a search for google on it you can do you can search on plugins you can check which ones are the best uh obviously if you have any questions or comments about the entire process feel free to email me or leave comments under the video under udemy or youtube on my own on my own website wherever it is uh 
Like I said, I really, really highly recommend Elegant Themes. Elegant Themes was how I made my own website, which I mean, a lot of people look at this website, especially beginners, uh, people who've never done this before, and they're like, wow, how'd you make this website? But if you look at this website, everything on here is essentially just all the stuff I already taught you. Image links, uh, sign up form, you know, links through images. This is an image. Uh, I mean, this was through Elegant Themes. I wouldn't know how to set up a slider, but they have it really easy through that same area back here. Dashboard. And then appearance and vision theme options. So this was the corporation. When I go to the back end and I go to the corporation theme options, it asks me how I want to set up this slider. So everything you see is, I mean, it's completely within your reach. It doesn't take any coding, uh, except very, very minor instances like you already saw. But I mean, for the most part, that's why I recommend once you learn to do this process, go ahead and, and start freelancing because look at this. This is a professional looking website and I pretty much did the entire thing through an elegant theme and WordPress. So that's it guys. Thank you for watching. Again, any questions or comments, email me, leave a comment. You can do it on Udemy. You can do it on YouTube. You can do it on my website. You can do it anywhere. Also be sure to sign up for my newsletter. It's, you know, the best method I have for connecting with people that uh you know want to learn more about making money online obviously if you're watching this as a part of the photography school um <clears throat> you're more than welcome to join this how to make money online school as well the lions club all right thank you for watching guys hey this is mike omar from www.makemoneyfromhomelionsclub.com and today I'm going to teach you how to put a sign up form on your website and how to create a mailing list slash newsletter for your website or your business. Um, before we start, I want to talk about a few of the reasons why I think it's a great idea for any business to create a newsletter that people can sign up for online. Um, one of the first reasons is that a mailing list uh, will never die. It's a collection of email addresses that you get over time and even if your website for some reason goes under, even if your business for some reason goes under, uh, you have all those email addresses which means you have all those contacts which means you, ha you always have a way to communicate with all your customers or your fans or your audience. So that's one fantastic reason to have a mailing list and to start growing your mailing list over time. Just, just create one and start uh, another reason that it's great to have a newsletter, a regular newsletter, is that it's a constant reminder of your business to your entire audience. Whether it's weekly or monthly, they will, they will be reminded about your business and about your services. Um, another great thing about a newsletter is that it's a very personal way to communicate with your audience. Um, it's much more personal than general content on a website. It's you know, it, you're talking to someone through email, it's, you're talking to them directly. So it's fantastic. And then one of the most obvious reasons it's great to have a mailing list um, that your newsletter, you know, that your newsletter is delivered to is that even though your newsletters are developed, are delivered on a regular schedule or on in, any schedule that you want, if at any time you have uh, some kind of important announcement, some kind of time sensitive issue, uh, maybe it's a special promotion, maybe it's just something you need to announce to your audience about changing policies, whatever it is, you can do it all at once very easily. So those are the reasons it's a really great idea to have a sign up form and create a mailing list for your business. One last reason it's great to have a mailing list that you've developed over time, and this is true for web owners. Yeah, or even business owners, if something were to happen to the website or were to happen to the business, um, you know, the website got hacked and it got destroyed or, or the business went under, but you want to start a new business that's sort of related. If you have that mailing list, you have a way to communicate with all those people who you've worked with before, even if the business is gone or even if the website is gone and you can quickly rebuild. So that's a fantastic reason to create a mailing list and to start collecting email addresses. And just to give you a few quick examples of how you could utilize a mailing list, regardless of your profession, I'm just going to give you three quick ones. Um, you know, say you're a dentist and you own your own practice. 
Um, you could have a monthly newsletter that you send out that has, you know, simple dental tips, sim simple dental hygiene tips, and guarantee that if someone enjoys those newsletters, you know, enjoys the information, whenever they need to go to the dentist, they're gonna, they're just gonna think of you because that, you know, they've been reminded of your services on a monthly basis. If you send them a really great newsletter with really awesome tips, they might forward that email to their friends and you'll get some new customers. Um, you know, if you have some special, you know, dental promotion, that, you know, you're selling like electric toothbrushes at a discounted price for this week, you could send it to all your customers and probably get a lot more sales than you would have just having the sale at your office without any way to announce it. So, you know, that's, that's one example of if you're a dentist, that's how you could, uh, that's how you could utilize your newsletter to get more out of your business. Um, let's do one more example. Say you are a promoter of an annual music festival. You know, um, you could have a monthly newsletter and every month you just have, you know, news about, uh, musicians, just general information about concerts going on, stuff like that. And it's a way to keep readers engaged, thinking about the music, looking forward to the festival that's coming next year. Um, you know, every, all announcements related to the festival, you can include as they come up outside of the regular monthly newsletter, things like new performers that'll be on there, uh, special ticket prices, when the tickets will be released, you know, promotional events, all kinds of stuff. So there's a lot of advantages to having a newsletter, no matter what kind of business you're in, especially if you have a website. So, all right, those are all the examples. That's why you should do it. Let's get on with the lesson. All right, so let's go to my main website, makemoneyfromhomelionsclub.com. And I have it set up so that if you're a very first time visitor, uh, the opt-in form will pop in five seconds into visiting the website. So just like that, it just happened. Uh, anyone who's visiting my website for the first time, this will pop in and I'm gonna try and get them to sign in. And this is an option that I use Aweber. Aweber is who I use to um, set up my mailing list. Uh, they're absolutely the most reputable company for email marketing, which is why I went with them. And they have the option of, of making a pop-in pop in opt-in form, or you could have a static one on your website. And I also have a static one here. See, and this one is on every single page of my website. So, uh, you know, first thing you want to do, if you're on my website, go to resources. As you can see, I have the mailing form always on the sidebar because I'm always trying to get as many email addresses as I can for all those reasons I mentioned earlier. So if you're on my website, go to resources. If you're watching this video on YouTube or on the post that I'm going to make on this website, once this video is made, um, you can just go underneath the video and click on the Aweber link. If you're on the resources page, you can just go to email marketing, drop down and click on Aweber. And once you're on Aweber, go to order, order the plan, and then I will meet you at the next screen and I will show you how to set up a mailing list. All right, so once you've signed up, go back to the main screen, uh, type in your customer login and password that you just set up. Um, once you log in on the main screen, there's gonna be a big blue button that says create new list. Press on that and I'll meet you at that screen. All right, here we are at the next screen. Um, pretty much, I'm just gonna walk you through the setup wizard. Uh, Aweber is really user-friendly. They make it really easy for you to set up a mailing list, set up a newsletter, and set it up however you want. But let's just go through the process anyway. Um, all right, so list name, um, just go with some description. You know, let's continue with the dental website. So just put dentist already in use by you or another customer. So let's make it there we go. List description. This is the mailing list for my dental website. From Michael Omar, it's fine. Email address, Michael Omar, make money from homelinesclub.com. Contact address. Uh, I guess it's a, some kind of policy, some kind of compliance policy that you have to include an actual physical address that will be listed on your email messages. Um, if you don't feel comfortable putting your home address, and I know I certainly don't, uh, I would just put in some kind of PO box that you own or something like that, or maybe your business address. 
So let's just type something in. Two, three, fake street, you know, New York. New York. There we go. Uh, notifications, name and email. Receive an email every time you want a new subscriber. Um, I would definitely do that. You know, I get emails all the time for new subscribers and it always makes me happy. So name and email and save settings and go to the next page. All right, uh, next page, um, company name, whoops, New York Dentist. Maybe that NewYorkDentist.com. Of course, this is just an example. Whoops. Uh, maybe it's, there we go, email signature, like Omar, oh, let's continue with the example, Dr. Mike Omar, that is obviously not true, social media and sharing, uh, you know, this is optional, but for now it's not important, let's see, global text snippets, also not needed, save setting, and I'll meet you at the next page. All right, so here it's gonna ask you, um, you know, to modify your confirmation message. The confirmation message is essentially what happens is they sign up for your mailing list. They're gonna get an email that looks just like this. It says confirm your subscription. Once they click on the link there, then they will start getting the newsletters that you've already set up. But until they do that, they're not gonna receive anything. So here you can manipulate what it says, but honestly, the default settings are fine. Subject, confirm your subscription. You know, you can change it to any of these. Um, it has the option where their first name shows up and then confirm your subscription. I don't think it matters. Um, I just go with the default settings. We receive your request for information from the default. Oh, this should be dentist. Whoops, here we go. It should be in this one. So confirm your subscription, that one's fine. We, re we received your request for information from the Dentist 1000 group before we begin sending you the information you requested. We want to be certain you ha we have your permission. So that's the email that they'll get once they sign up. And once they click on this link, then they'll start getting the newsletter. So this message looks fine to me. Um, go through, you know, right here it says New York Dentist. I could change it to Mike Omar. Like you get the idea. Just modify it to whatever you, you uh, think is best. Require opt-in on web forms. That's essentially what this is, that they're opting in. And I like to keep it on because I like to make sure that the people that are receiving my emails are people who actually want them. I don't want to annoy anybody. Um, but, you know, if someone actually wants my information, then they can just opt in. Three, success page. Um, this one's pretty important. You, you, when they, when they click this link and confirm that they, they want to be a part of your mailing list, you can send them to any page that you want. So what I would recommend doing is, you know, uh, our example was New York, whoops, dentist.com. And then I would send them to some page that I would just create that I specifically make for a thank you page. So it could be like, thank you for subscribing or something like that. And you want to make sure that the success page has a few things. You want to make sure in the success page, you're like, thank you for signing up. And you want to make sure to include something along the lines of, please don't forget to whitelist my email address uh, with whatever email service that you use, Gmail, whatever. The, the idea there is that if they whitelist your email address, um, they'll, it'll make sure that they receive all the emails they signed up for and none of, them, none of them end up in the spam folder. Another thing that would be a good idea to do is, is in the thank you page to include something along the lines of what they should expect from their newsletter. Say you you have a monthly one, you just, just say something like, um, from this newsletter you can expect to get a monthly, a monthly email with great tips about dental hygiene and occasionally but not very often you will receive updates about our dental practice or promotions related to our dental office but aside from that it's just going to be one monthly email with great hygiene tips and nothing more and then just say you know something like thank you for subscribing Mike Omar um, so those are important things to do two important things for your success page one 
please whitelist my email address to what you can expect in this newsletter. Because once you tell people what they can expect, um, they're, they're more prepared for it and they're more ready for it. It's, it's an absolutely great thing to do. Scroll down, save settings, and I'll meet you at the next screen. Okay, so press save settings, click on do this step, which is create a welcome email. So uh, this is where you actually create um, your emails. So very first one, welcome to my mailing list. Uh, you know, it just depends what it is that you did, but let's continue with the dentist example. So welcome to my mailing list. And then scroll down. They have all these templates here that you can pick from, but honestly, I just like to go with plain text because one, it's easier for me. I don't have to think about it. And two, it makes sure every single person that's receiving the email will be able to read it. You know, some people can only read plain text emails. If they get something with all these images and stuff, that's not gonna display properly on their web browser or on their computer. And to avoid all those kinds of complications, I like to just keep it plain text. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so what I would recommend doing definitely is writing your newsletters on, you know, Microsoft Word or something, and then eventually just pasting them over. But just to show you how it works and how their, uh, you know, editing stuff works, what you want to do is go to templates, click on plain, start over, and you can edit here. So those are default stuff. You can just put like, hi, welcome to my newsletter, and thank you, you for signing up. As promised, here is your first newsletter. You know, dental tips. And then da da da, da da da. Up. Thank you, Mike Omar. And also in my emails, I like to leave a little call to action. So maybe please share or like my website and feel free to forward this email to your friends if you enjoyed the content. Anyway, you get the idea. That's the first newsletter. Thank you, Michael Omar. And that's it. That, that'll be, so you've already seen the confirmation message that they'll be sent once they sign up. Uh, you've already, you have to set up your thank you page, your thank you URL, which as you already know, has that information on it. Please whitelist my email address. Uh, this is what you can expect. And then this is the very first letter that they're gonna be sent. So go all the way down. You can save it and click next and I'll meet you at the next screen. Okay, so at the next screen, it's gonna ask you uh, at what interval you want this sent. This is one of the coolest features that Aweber has. It lets you decide, you know, how many days you want in between your messages. This is your very first one. So you want it to be sent as soon as they sign up. You know, they signed up to see that thing that you promised them, whether it was the very first newsletter or that ebook, you know, whatever it was. So put it zero days after previous. Um, if you want, you can have it only sent on certain days, things like that. Uh, I just keep that off. To me, that's not important. Um, they can get the email whenever, as long as the intervals are correct. Click tracking. I would definitely keep this on because this is how you can start to track what things within your emails people are clicking on and obviously that data is very useful. Click save and exit and I'll meet you at the next screen. Okay, so this is a screen where you kind of see your overall email list, uh, your email sequence. Um, all the emails that you're eventually gonna create are gonna end up on this list. So say you wanna have two years worth of content at one email per month, that means you eventually, you have to write 24 newsletters. Um, but what's really cool about it is no matter when people sign up, They'll get that first one, then they'll get the next one 30 days later, then they'll get the next one 30 days after that, and you set all that up right from here. So 
what's really cool about this whole thing is you're reminding your customers about your products, things like that, but it's all automated. You just set it up once and every time someone signs up, they will get those emails in the order that you set up uh, with as many days in between as you set up. So to give you an example, let's do one more. New HTML message. Uh, like I said, I prefer to go to pl with plain text message. And the exact same process. Insert your subject here. So newsletter to dental, you know, dental products I recommend. Something like that, but capitalize. So, hi, I recommend these products for these reasons. Obviously, you want to make these newsletters really good, but you know, just for the sake of the example, etc., etc., etc. Thank you, and please follow me on Twitter at you know, and whatever. Like, for example, mine really is at. Mike Omar 9999. Mike Omar. Go down here. Save. Next. Uh, we said we we're going to do it monthly, so 30 days. Save and exit. So now you see how quick and painless this process actually is. Um, I mean, you know, if you're going to do two years worth at one per month, you have to do this 24, you know, 24 more times. But like I said, just do it. Just get the process done. Spend a day, a week, however long it takes you doing it. And once you do that, your mailing list is, is set. It's set for good. And you can keep adding to it. You can manipulate it. You can change it. It's all done from right here. So now you know how to do the regular follow-up messages, the ones that have the intervals. See right here, it has the 30 days. If we were to do this one more time, you do 30 days again, and this whole process would happen. They sign up, they would get these two in the very first day. Then a month later, they would get this one. Then if you set up another one, it has 30 day interval, they would get another one the next month. And that's it. So those messages are follow up, me follow up messages. If you have something that you need to announce immediately that's unrelated to the order of this thing, like, you know, say you're the dental office is moving to a new location, you need everyone to know, then you click on broadcast. It's the exact same process, except instead of this one, you know, coming in, uh, instead of this one coming in, you know, after whatever amount of days after the mailing list, this is just going to be a blast sent out to everyone in your email list, no matter what point of the process they're in, no matter if they've gotten all the emails already, or they just signed up yesterday, they will all get this email. So you do something like important announcement. Uh, hi everyone, just a heads up that my dental office is moving location. Please make a note of it. Whoops, uh, you gotta do this. Please make a note of it. Oh, if we had pressed wrap lines, it would have automatically wrapped. Anyway, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mike Omar. Save. Press next. Sharing. Hmm. You can, oh yeah, you can, you know, you know, announce this on your homepage or on your RSS feed. You can do it on Facebook or Twitter. Um, I'm just going to say no to all of these, press next. And you can also schedule it to whatever date that you want, or you can, you can do it immediately, just however you want. And then you press save message and it'll send whenever you decide to send it. All subscribers, here's all the options, but you get the idea save message and you could send out your broadcast immediately. All right. So the final step is creating the web form itself. And it's actually just as easy as all the rest of the steps. So um, here you have, like you can choose from all these different templates, um, you know, depending on what kind of website you have. I mean, they've got all kinds of things. They got shoes. This one's just plain with like a wood background. This one's about tires. So if you have some kind of car website or business, modern is actually the one that I use. Load template. 
you know. So let me just show you how easy this is for my newsletter. Save. We respect your email privacy. You can take that off. Email marketing by Aweber, you can take that off. Have, you know, we respect your privacy. But you know, you can do it um, without the link to Aweber. I mean, you can, you can just do all kinds of things here. Like it's just a really, really easy way to manipulate the look of your signup form. I mean, you can do whatever you want, um, you know, but since you see how easy it is to do all these things, um, let me explain a little bit uh, the reasoning behind how I set up mine. So mine, sign up for my weekly Make Money From Home Lions Club newsletter. I want them to know that it's weekly. The confirmation page will make you laugh or at least smile guaranteed. That is to sort of entice people who may not be so interested, but maybe that'll grab their attention and they'll decide to sign up. Other things people do that are, that are in line with that is like sign up for my newsletter and I'll, and I'll give you my, my ebook for free about how I made, you know, $3,000 in one week using this, you know, strategy, something like that, something that'll entice the reader. And then, you know, people have all kinds of things, but you know, if you want to see mine, Hey, you know, you got to sign up. That's uh, <laughs> that's the idea here. Um, then next, it sort of just explains a little bit about what the newsletter is, what kind of topics are covered. You know, these are these are actual um, these are actual emails that are already written up that if people sign up, they'll, they'll be sent eventually. You know, I did this work a long time ago. And then at the very end, I have a, a few things you should know about my newsletter. I'll never share an email address with anyone for any reason. You can unsubscribe at any time. And like this website, the information in this news, newsletter is and always will be 100% free. Uh, I like these things just as, you know, one, they're all true. Two, they comfort the person. You know, people don't like to submit their email addresses or their information as much these days. But I like to tell them, like, I'll never share their email address. They can unsubscribe at any time. And everything on it is free. So hopefully that entices people to sign up more. So, you know, this is that's my reasoning um, I think it works well. There's people that have different theories about what works the best to get the most signups, but you know, that's how I did it. And you know, you can, if you sign up for my newsletter, one, you'll see the confirmation page that'll make you laugh or at least smile. And two, you'll get a living example of these things that I'm preaching. So that's how I would set it up. And then obviously you can just come over here and do it that way. Exactly like I did if you want. Okay, so I showed you how I would recommend setting up the, uh, the opt-in form, um, you know, the reasoning behind how I word it, how I present it, etc. Uh, the one important thing you, uh, that I wanted to point out is the type that you want. Inline simply means it's just on the website. For example, this one is inline, but you can, you can get different ones. Popover hovers within the web page, usually unblockable. Lightbox. That's the example that I showed you at the very beginning. That's the one that shows up on my Lions Club website. And pop-up opens in new windows, but most browsers can block it. So I prefer having inline always there. And I like having Lightbox to just show up only one time for, for whenever a person visits. Like, I'll show you. you. You have the option of setting up however you want. But I I don't want to annoy my readers. I want people to come back to my website regularly. And having uh, a sign up list pop up every single time they visit a website can get really annoying, and will turn off a lot of users. So that's my reasoning there. So let's just do the inline one. Save web form. Saved. Go to step two. Uh, you know, whoops. My web form form name. Just call it form one. And you'll know form one is the one that is uh, um, in line. Thank you, page. Basic version. Yeah, keep it basic. It's a new window. Already subscribed. Yeah, this is fine. Um, you can leave it on your default settings. Or you can, you know, once again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. So that's why they have these options. 
Um, I would just leave it on default, go to step three. Whoops, okay, save web form. And then this is how you publish it. I will install my form, my web designer will install, have Aweber host my form, click on I will install my form, and grab the JavaScript snippet instead of the raw HTML version. See, the reason you want the JavaScript snippet is because you can put this code on your website and anytime you go back over here and you update the design, say you resize this and you reword this, you know, sign up for my mailing list, whatever it is. Um, as long as you published, whoops, save it again. As long as you publish this on your website, as long as you put this on your website, uh, that mailing form will automatically update. Whereas if you had put the raw HTML version, every time you updated this, you would have to go and submit new code. So I absolutely recommend going with the JavaScript snippet version. And I'm going to put it on the website you can, so you can see what it looks like. All right, so I'm going to copy this, copy it. Here I'm at the back end of my Make Money From Home Lions Club.com website. Go to Appearance, Widgets. Go to, let's put in a brand new text box. Paste this in, save it. And now, you'll see that it's that easy. Obviously, I just do, did this for example, if I really, you know, I spent a lot more time designing this one and making it look nice and stuff, and you'll do the same. But this is really how easy it is for you to put in a mailing list on your website. Um, someone puts in their name and their email, the whole thing is already set up. They would get everything we've just set up. But obviously, I'm not going to keep that there, so I'm going to take it off, but just wanted to show you the example. And then one more thing. Let's, uh, you know, go back to design and let's save this one and let's, uh, go to web forms, create a new web form. And so now we're going to do the exact same thing, but let's create one that is a light box. So create the light box. Say we're satisfied with it like this, go to step two. Um, you know, web form two light box, so we can identify them. Uh, go to step three, save web form. And I'll install my web form. Okay, wait, we missed something because there is an option that allows you to determine Lightbox Advanced, here, this is where I wanted to go. Lightbox, that's the one that pops in, the original one I showed you. Advanced, Display Option, Default, Fade In, Slide In from Top, Slide In from Bottom. So mine, if you remember, slide it in from the bottom. So I had to set this. Delay, I had set it for five seconds because I want people a chance to, you know, start looking at the website before it pops in. And then Recurrence, Always Display, would be extremely annoying. It means every time someone lands on your website, they're gonna have that pop-up, they would hate it. Display once, that's the one that I have, or show every X day. So every, you know, you can make it, you know, 360, whoops. You can make it, you know, once or twice a year. So you could put like 180 days, something like that. But me, I just like to have it once. I show it to them once, if they don't sign up, Cool, whatever. I won't bother with it. I won't bother them with it anymore. But display one slide from bottom, delay five seconds. Now you can go to publish, save web form, copy it. You could go back here to widgets and you could just paste this right underneath it. The reason it doesn't matter is because this is the one that's always going to display. This one will only display once and it'll, it'll pop in from the bottom of the screen. So it's not going to actually, you know, you can save it and then you can update this over here and it's not going to show up anywhere. So you, so that's the way I have it set up on the widget. I have the very first one, which is the one that's in line. That's always there. 
And then right underneath it, I just paste the code that is for the one that is gonna pop in only once for every unique visitor. And that's it. So save it and you're done. All right, so that is the entire process of setting up a mailing list, setting up your newsletter, setting up an opt-in form. It's honestly not that difficult. Um, this last tab over here uh, will give you reports on click-through rate, on opening rate, on what people like the most, at what points people, you know, which web forms people have signed up for the most. There's all kinds of cool statistics in there that'll help you uh, sort of you know, grow and evolve how you set up your mailing list, learn from it, and then make it even better, make it even more powerful. But aside from that, that's the whole process. Um, there's just a few more things I want to go over. You know, if you come back to, to Make Money From Home Lions Club, just want to point out a few things. Um, definitely try and do something like this. Uh, you know, something that'll grab the reader's attention, that'll make them want to sign up, aside from the fact that you have a newsletter. Make that first one something you know, either an ebook or, you know, sign up for the mailing list, you'll get a coupon for my services. Um, you know, for me, it's, I'm going to make you laugh. And like I said, if you want to see it, you got to sign up for the mailing list. And then, uh, also one more thing I really want to, um, encourage you to do is to make sure that your newsletter is not very salesy or very pitchy, you know, um, just make it useful information make it good, make it high quality, and people will love it. But if every single time you send an email, you're trying to promote some product, you're trying to sell something, it's going to turn off a lot of readers real fast. So absolutely try and avoid that. Um, you can, you know, you're allowed to try and sell things on your newsletter, but if you're going to do so, do it sparingly. Um, aside from that, you know, you at this point, you know how to make a mailing list and you understand why I recommend that every business do it. If, uh, you know, Obviously, I recommend that you sign up for my mailing list um, so you can see that everything I've talked about, I actually try and follow, and I'll see you at the next lesson. Okay, so thank you for watching, guys. Please leave comments or questions if you have any down below, either in the post or below the YouTube video on YouTube itself. Obviously, I had this whole lesson on the mailing list, so please sign up for my mailing list. Uh, please share this with others if you enjoyed the lesson. And I will see you at the next lesson. Thank you for watching.